Get ready for a high school action on the place for local sports, The Score. Brought to you by Central Maine Community College. More than just a community college, over 40 academic degrees and certificates and one of the lowest tuition rates in New England. Just go to cmcc.edu. Central Maine Motors Auto Group in Waterville, the dealer with no dog fees, where cars and trucks cost you less. Online at cmautogroup.com. By Hammond Lumber Company, serving Maine and New Hampshire from 22 locations. Your building project partner, HammondLumber.com. Midstate Machine. Looking for a career? Check out the Machinist Development Program at MidstateUSA.com. Whittemore & Sons, your coyote tractor dealer. Sales and service by a family that cares. Somerset Stone & Stove, offering quality gas, pellet, and wood stoves and hardscape products. 201 Tire Battery & Service, your tire and battery experts on the Augusta Vassalboro line. P.J. Diggs, the excavation pros. If it's dirt, they do it. Renewal by Anderson, award-winning replacement windows and doors. Schedule your free consultation today. Assistance Plus, providing home care, behavioral health, and developmental services. Together, we can make a difference. Joseph's Market, Front Street, Waterville, famous for fine meats. The Harry J. Smith Company, 13 Sanger Avenue, Waterville, serving the Central Maine community for over 100 years. Computer Improvements, Water Street, Scow Higgin, your headquarters for computer maintenance. Casella Waste, for your residential and commercial trash pickup. And by Dixon's Country Market in Benton, celebrating 10 years with 24-hour diesel service and the best takeout food around. Now, let's go live to Mike Violet and A.J. Knight. Tonight, for the 145th time, the Coney Rams and the Gardner Tigers will strap on the shoulder pads, snap on the chin straps, and play football tonight at Fuller Field in Augusta. Welcome to our broadcast of the 145th edition of Coney Gardner. I'm Mike Violet. He is A.J. Knight. Galen Neal is on the camera tonight and the anticipation for this one the buildup has been pretty interesting this weekend there isn't a playoff spot on the line aj because both teams are going to the playoffs right. it's the seeding somebody's going to get a home game out of a victory here tonight if coney wins they'll play gardner again next week, next week. here gardner wins we'll see him down in hoke field and they'll play down there so there's that on the table yeah double victory right because obviously you get to take the trophy home yes the boot. and then the insult of telling your opponent okay now we'll see you in our house next week too where we'll have i'm sure the trophy on front and display indeed the boot you will see it coming up here later on you'll also see it on the field tonight as well two good football teams there four and three coney has recovered from the physical beating they took at Mesolonsky a few weeks ago, aside from losing the football game 39-21, to then they got hammered by Lawrence the following week. But they bounced back, A.J., and next man up has worked for them. But most of all, Parker Morin yes. has been kept upright, and the sophomore quarterback has been incredible. Yeah, they've kind of refound their passing game. I think against uh, Bangor, he set a state record with like 480 passing yards. They yep. dropped 55 on him that night. Uh, Surgent is, I think, 113 yards. I'll, I'll keep you updated through the game from a 1,000-yard season. He's got 11 touchdowns. And a little bit of revitalization talking to both coaches, who we'll, of course, hear from a little bit later before, as we get into the pregame. Uh, one of the things I know Gardner talked about is they feel like Coney's running game is sneaky good. Mm. Yeah, and um, it, it is. It has been. And early on this year, they tried – to keep more balance in their offense. B.L. Lippert, as you're going to hear when we talk to him in a little bit, is going to say otherwise now. They've decided <laughs> that it's a past first run second <laughs> offense. Which is interesting because, you know, you look at some of the publication previews, and obviously we'll hear from both coaches, but they talk about the fact that tonight Coney's going up against probably one of the best secondaries they've seen mm. all this season, and so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out because there are some key injuries in the lines for Gardner. Lots of angles to this game. The coaches grew up in the communities where they now coach. B.L. Lippard here, his father coached here. Patrick Munzing, his father coached 
at Gardner for years and years. Literally from the day Patrick Munzing was born, he's been a part of this rivalry, and basically B.L. Lippert has as well. And in fact, our digital director, Sean Packard, has put together a really nice package of the history of this game and the boot that will be played for tonight. That's a 87? Yeah. Uh, 97. 97. The voices of Don Bumpus and Bob West, two old friends of mine. That video's got to be from State Cable back in the day, but this series began 1892. Not only is it the oldest rivalry in Maine, it's also one of the oldest in the country. 145 years of Coney Gardner football. Coney's got the lead now, 79, 56, and 10. And this is the first time they'll meet with winning records on both sides for the first time since 1992. And, of course, there is the boot right there that's going to be played for. I think we are talking about the third boot that has been part of this history, and it was awarded to the winner, as you saw, in the game 1954. And that boot, painted red and white on one side, black and orange on the other, of course, the school colors. Very unique in that way. And printed on the boot are the scores of every game going back 145 years. So it's almost like the Stanley Cup in a way. So there's a look at some of the history. And part of the history, as I mentioned, is the coaches. Patrick Munzing and B.L. Lippert have been a part of this history combined for about 80 years, That's, honest to God. Wow. And we're going to take a timeout. We'll come back to Fuller Field here in Augusta. And we'll hear from Patrick Munzing and B.L. Lippert. We'll do that. Right after this. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Over 40 academic degrees and programs recognized as some of the best in the United States. Nursing, criminal justice, forensic, psychology, IT, education, culinary arts, and so much more. Offering one of the lowest tuition rates in New England. Plus, a top-seeded national champion producing athletics department. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Find your passion. Go to cmcc.edu. 201 Tire Battery and Service and the Goodyear Credit Card for all your auto needs with great benefits. Six-month financing when you buy $250 or more. Subject to credit approval, terms and conditions apply. Double savings on select Goodyear tires via mail-in rebate. Accepted at Exxon and mobile locations nationwide. The Goodyear Credit Card, the complete solution. 201 Tire Battery and Service on the Augusta Vassalboro Line. Get yours. Apply now. Nothing brings people together like good food. So when you're cooking for the ones you love, why trust anyone but Joseph's Market? Joseph's Market is famous for their fine meats. Plus, no one makes sausage like Joseph's. They have 32 rotating flavors like Mexican chorizo, teriyaki, pineapple, or spinach and feta. So there's something for everyone. You know, an apron is just a cape worn backwards. So be a superhero at your next cookout with fresh meat and sausage from Joseph's Market on Front Street in Waterville. Find them at josephsmarketmain.com and like them on Facebook. For us, it's a family business that is steeped in tradition. You know, our relationship with Waterville goes back a long ways. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to grow, and we've been able to grow with the town. We look at the work that we do as something bigger than just the sale of a car or the servicing of an automobile. We're here to be a part of something bigger than just ourselves by giving back to the community with our time and our energy because it's all about taking care of people. Mike Violet, A.J. Knights, back here live at Fuller Field in Augusta. Galen Neal on the camera here tonight as the seniors. It is senior night. The seniors here at Coney High School get introduced to the crowd and meet their parents and give mom some flowers and all the pomp and circumstance that goes with that. A lot of pomp and circumstance in this rivalry. Both coaches are truly a part of the fabric of their community. B.L. Lippert for Coney, Patrick Munzing for the Gardner Tigers. We had a chance to talk to both of them. First of all, we'll talk to the home coach, B.L. Lippert. Coney Gardner, you don't need to say much more than that. And the Coney head coach, B.L. Lippert, 
has been a part of the Coney Gardner rivalry since he was a kid. He grew up in Augusta. He went to Coney High. He played at Coney High. He played in Coney Gardner games, and now he is coaching in them, and he joins us now. Coach, glad to have you with us here on the pregame show. How many of these you been a part of? Uh, geez, 19 when my dad was a coach, and then the last four I was a player, and now 19 more. So this is my 38th, I guess, Coney Gardner game. Well, uh, that's quite a lot. So you, <laughs> but between you and Patrick Munzing, uh, you're approaching like 80, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a few for uh, the, the two of us. I know this. When he played against me, uh, he won the two games we played against each other. He was a darn good football player, so uh, I'm I'm glad he's not playing Friday night, that's for sure. Yeah, so you guys both come in with um, four and three records so far on the season. You've won three in a row after getting the daylights beat out of you by Mesolonsky <laughs> physically, and then after you lost all those players to Lawrence, you've won three in a row. What's happening good for you now? Um, you know, I think we've kind of con- committed to the pass game with a, with a sophomore quarterback early in the year. I kind of went through that method of, like, let's establish the run and open up the pass a little bit later. And then after Lawrence, I said, well, you know, our pass game is better than our run game, so now we're kind of using the pass to set up the run. And so I think our commitment to that, I think getting some of those younger kids uh, that had to kind of come in the second half against Mesolonsky and then start against a physical Lawrence team, they've uh, played a little bit better on the defensive side of things. So I think it's just a matter of, of growing. We start six sophomores on each side of the ball. So, um, you know, they're, they're growing up quickly, quicker than we maybe expected them to in the preseason, but we lost a couple seniors to ACLs and uh, broken collarbones. So it's been uh, a wild ride. We've played well the last three weeks. Be a Lippert committed to the passing game. How's that different from any other day? I think uh, listen, people... uh, we really, uh, for the last five or six years, we have been about 65% run, 35% pass. So we, we, this, this is back to the old Ben Lucas days, I guess. And uh, some people like love it. Some people probably are in the stands yelling for us to run it more, but we're just trying to do what uh, you know, yields the most points. Let's well, say. you got a kid quarterback in Parker Morin who looks like he can handle the responsibility. No question. I wasn't sure early in the year. He didn't play particularly well at South Portland early. He was nervous, first career start. So uh, I think that kind of contributed to some of the play calling early. And then for the last four or five weeks, he's really opened it up. He's thrown the ball well. He's run around a little bit more than he did early in the season, too. And he's just going to keep getting better every week because you know, he hasn't played a lot of football at all and really not much quarterback either. So um, you know, he's gotten better and better in Parker Surgeon. It's about some young sophomore receivers have emerged. So we've been a little bit more difficult to defend the last three or four weeks than we were early on. Talking to B.L. Lippert, the head coach at Coney High School, taking on Gardner, the Coney Gardner game coming up here on the score. Patrick Munzing's team opened up winning four of five, but they've stumbled the last two, bombed by Chevres, and then I think a surprising loss to the Skowhegan Riverhawks, who are certainly improving. Um, what about Gardner concerns you as a team? Yeah, they've got really good athletes. I mean, they're, they're second-level players with Mishu and Chadwick and... Um... Uh, number eight, Zach Christian, you know, the, the quarterback, Burgess, can run around. So they've got really good athletes. Uh, and any time a team has athletes, you know, they can score quickly. So that's always, um, you know, t- tough to defend. And then defensively, you know, they're, they're penetrating. They blitz a little bit off the edges and give you some problems in pass protection. So trying to kind of figure out what they're doing defensively is always uh, a challenge. They do a nice job of varying what they do. So, uh, and it's a rivalry game. And they just, if you look back historically, it's been really close for, you know, a lot of years in this rivalry series. And, uh, that's been those two last year, and it looks like now we're going to get rain again for about the, I don't know, sixth year out of the last seven we've had rain in this game. At least we have turf, but yes. last year in the turf, uh, on the turf at Gardner it rained, so feels like the elements are always a factor, too, and just adds another layer to the Coney Gardner game. You, when you talk about rivalry games like this, and this is, I believe this is the oldest high school football rivalry in Maine, everybody always says, well, you can throw the records right out the window. Can you throw the records right out the window? Well, this year, I don't think either of us won it. It's the first yeah. time. I think Mike Mandel from the KJ told me it's the first time since yep. 1992 that both had a winning record. So wow. this year, we don't want to throw out the records because we both are at least over 500. Uh, but, yeah, I think so. I, I really think you know, there's some years where one team is you know, maybe considerably better than the, the other team, and maybe it's going to be a 40 nothing game. But for most, most of the time, we're, when we're pretty evenly matched talent-wise, you know, it's, it's going to be a good game, competitive game, and um, we one team usually rises if, you know, rises up if they're not quite as talented and makes it a game. So we've seen that over and over in this rivalry, and that's what we expect on well, Friday Well, in, in a world, Coach Lippert, where we're losing rivalries in all sports at all levels left and right, I am glad you guys are both back, Coney and Gardner, playing in the same conference and playing in the last game of the season. It's, way, it's the way it ought to be. Yeah, it certainly feels normal. You know, and what's yeah. interesting, though, Mike, is that, like, when I was in high school, we didn't make the playoffs any because only four teams made it out of 10 or 12, whatever it was. So yeah. it was literally our Super Bowl every year, and we treated it as such. So yeah. so much build up. And now with both of us going to the playoffs, we've been fortunate to go 
you know, most of the, you know, most of my head coaching career to the playoffs. Now, even when it's the last game, it's it's just the last regular season game. Like I told the team the other day, let's not make it bigger than it is. Like the the winning the game next weekend actually matters more than the one this weekend. It's hard as that is to believe. Maybe not for the alumni and the guy living in California that's bought, paying attention to the scores, but next week matters more if we lose than if we lose this Friday. So we try to not to make it bigger than it is. Uh, it's hard to do though because everyone wants to build it up, and it, it's a great rivalry. I love to play in it and coaching it, but. Ultimately, next Friday's game matters more than this Friday in a weird, you know, uh, twist. Coney Head Football Coach B.L. Lippert, thanks for the time, Coach Lippert. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Coney Coach B.L. Lippert, as frank and honest as he usually is. They've committed to the past now, so we're going to see footballs flying in the air as you see the Coney Rams lined up here, ready to run through the banner. And as they get ready to do that, we also had a chance to sit down and talk to Gardner coach Patrick Munzing, who's been around in this rivalry as long as B.L. Lippert has. It's Coney Gardner. Not a whole lot more needs to be said. One of the interesting angles of this game tonight is the fact that both coaches have not only played in the game, now coached in the game. They also grew up as kids, I mean, back in Pop Warner days, watching this game be played. And Patrick Munzing, the head coach at Gardner High School, is with us now. Patrick, Coach Munzing, good to have you on the pregame show tonight. Tell us, um, how many games do you think you have witnessed between Cody and Gardner over the years, whether it's playing in them or not? Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, I would say, geez, I think I went to my first Coney Gardner game when I was about eight weeks old. <laughs> uh, would have been born, born the first uh, week of the season back in 1980. Uh, that kind of dates me at all, and... And I don't think I missed any through uh, up and through uh, college. Uh, I, and then I was away yeah, for a little bit. So. That that that's remarkable. And of course, you went on to play for your dad. You were the Fitzpatrick Trophy runner-up. Played a couple of years at the University of Maine. So you've been a part of this whole thing. Your brothers have played in the game. What does it mean to you, Patrick? It means an awful lot to be a part of something that's much bigger than even yourself or even your team when you kind of look back in, in something that is in the fiber of your community. Yeah. Um, growing up, you know, it was always talk of Coney Gardner, whether that was, you know, basketball or baseball or, or Legion baseball growing up. And, and, but it was all stemming from Coney Gardner football uh, and growing up in that and just that, the rival from the north, and it just, it was so, just threaded through our, our town culture uh, growing up that, it, you know, it, it's still, and it's still a part of it. It's still there. Yeah, it's still a part of it. It's still there. And this year it's interesting because you both come in with the same record. You started out like a house of fire, Coach Munzing. You won four or five, stumbled of late Lost the last two. What do you need to correct to get this team back on the winning track against Coney? I think part of it is getting healthy and getting back to our roots, you know, where we were at the beginning of the season, and, and we're kind of looking to get back that way. You know, we've had, we've had a few injuries which don't always make the paper because they're not, your, sure. they're not your, your star athletes per se, but they're really the guys that make the machine work. Um, you know, offensive line, defensive line guys that, that are really contributing. And, and no secret to us coming into the season, that was kind of our question, was our offense and defensive line going to be able to keep up in the Pine Tree Conference? And, you know, you lose one or two of those guys with, with not a lot of depth, it, it definitely shows. Um, so we're, we're getting some of those guys back, we hope. And, and we've had some other guys now that have had a few weeks of experience. So... We can kind of count on them now. They've got some games under their belt. You know, we started eight different seniors on our line last year, and we kind of were like, okay, how's this going to work? But we're, we're headed in the right direction and, and looking forward to Friday night. Talking to Gardner Tigers football coach Patrick Munzing. I almost said Rob Munzing before the game tonight here as Coney gets ready to take on Gardner. When you were that little kid on the sidelines, Coach Munzing, with your dad coaching the team, did you envision that? you would become Coach Munzing 20, 30 years down the line? You know, I always I always kind of felt that. You know, I kind of, being a, a state trooper and, and having that self of uh, community and, and giving back and service, it, it was one of those things that I really wanted to be able to do. And, and using the game of football to kind of 
teach and coach young young men and athletes uh, as they per, kind of progress through life is a is a great opportunity for me. You know, I, I hear often of stories and different adults now that talk about how big of an impact my father had mm-hmm. on their lives growing up, and to hear that and now be able to kind of do that same mentorship and, and coaching and that kind of thing. Um, it's something that I really enjoy. And growing up, I was, I was always an X's and O's. We were always in the backyard with sure. my dad or Coach Brown or uh, Coach Burgess as yep. like a pawn of like, hey, this new formation or this play or how are you going to do this? And, and I just, I've always been in love with the game of football. Talking to Patrick Munzing, the head football coach at Gardner High School, ahead of the Gardner Coney game here tonight. Coney is a team that is playing well. I think they've had some injuries. They've got a fine young sophomore quarterback in Parker Moore. And what kind of problems do they present to you, coach? Well, I mean, they're as hot as anybody right yep. now, right? You know, we we you know, film doesn't lie, and there's definitely a connection between the two Parkers. Um, which which is clear, but I think what kind of goes unsaid is is the soundness of their run game and the rest of their the rest of their package. You know, it that's the obvious thing that that's out there. But you know, their their system in itself. Coach Lippert's a great offensive mind. He's always been able to find the matchup that he's looking for, and and where is it, and how does it fit into their scheme. And you know, he's he's shown that through the Lobster Bowl and win with his Coney teams in the past. And, and now that he's had some time to kind of figure out what guys he's got, you know, they're, they're striking everywhere, all over the field. And it's like, okay, what, what do you give up and what do you try to overprotect, you know? And, mm-hmm. and it, uh, it definitely presents some challenges. Coach Munching, what's the one thing that you need to do both offensively and defensively to win this game? For us, it's play mistake free. You know, we, mm-hmm. we, what really hurt us in those last couple games is is our is some special teams turnovers and and some turnovers on offense. You know, if we can eliminate those and, and stop giving the other team extra possessions, um, that's that's the key to our game. And finally, Coach Munzing, Coach Rob Munzing, what has he taught you that you use the most when it comes to coaching the game of football? Ooh, that's a good question right there. <laughs> I, I I think that the biggest part is is that remember these these athletes are are, are kids. They're yeah. still growing and they're still learning the game. And as much as we can get on chalkboards with X's and O's and 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 kids will have their moments of highlights, but they also make mistakes and and not dwell on those things. You know, put the kids in the opportunity to do the best they can. Coach Patrick Munzing of the Gardner Tigers, best of luck tonight against the Coney Rams. We appreciate your time here this evening on The Score. Great. Thanks for uh, catching our game tonight. I look forward to it. The coaches, Patrick Munzing of Gardner, B.L. Lippert of Coney. The coin has been tossed. That has been won by Gardner. Gardner has elected to defer. They are going to kick off. So Coney will get the ball first here to start this game. The officials tonight... Rich Nolan is the referee. Joe Burnham is the umpire. Matthew Strout is the linesman. The field judge is Randy Ridley. The back judge is Jim Van Uden. the timer upstairs, the venerable Joe Mertzel. So Gardner will kick off. Right to left, the Tigers in their white uniforms. And Coney in the red. And the numbers are visible, AJ. Thank goodness. We love that. Thank goodness. That's already a win for this rivalry tonight, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. And the weather has cleared enough so that we are rain-free right now. Asher Nagy will kick off. It was raining as we were setting up, but it has stopped, so let's hope it stays that way. Nagy ready to kick. And the 145th matchup of Gardner and Coney is underway. It's a squibber, and it rolls by, and it rolls out of bounds past Anderson. Anderson St. Ange out of bounds, so that's a penalty. And a choice here for the Coney Rams. They can either take it at the 35, and I think that's what Coach Lippert has just signaled, or have him kick it again. I think they're going to kick it again. No, they are going to kick it again. Okay. So we'll have a redo. The kick out of bounds. St. Ange let it go smartly. 
And so Asher Nagy, the sophomore, will do it again. Do you need a drum roll this time as you say the 145th yes, I know. boot game's underway? Because it's not officially underway because nobody ever touched the ball in play. So Nagy will do it again. St. Ange on the near side, and I'm not sure who's on the far side. Can't see a number over there. Nagy with a kick. This one on a hop to St. Ange, 25 to the 30, 35, hit there, wrapped up and down. The ball's out! The football came out as St. Ange was swung around. And it looks like Coney got on the loose ball. So disaster averted there. Yeah, that was uh, wow. Sergeant was in the back there, and it took a fortuitous bounce. Sergeant luckily keeping his head on a swivel, tracked that one down and was able to jump on it. So first and 10 for Coney at the 34 for Parker Morin. The sophomore quarterback coming out in the shotgun. Parker Surgeon, of course, is his man. Surgeant wears number three, man in motion. And Morin back to throw, right side. Killian Arnold with the catch, looking for a block over the 40. And picked up seven, maybe eight yards on the play. So a solid gain on first down. There on the tackle for Gardner, Evan Mishu, the senior. It's going to be interesting to see as uh, we talked about the coaching staffs uh, and as you talked to Coach Lippert, he said, no, we throw the ball. An official's timeout. Uh, he said, no, we throw the ball. And then, obviously, on the Gardner side, in, in uh, some of the quotes that Coach Munson gave said that he thought their run game was sneaky good, plus they had some injuries in that offensive, uh, two-way players for the offensive and defensive line. All right, so the chain gang is all set over there. So we've got a second down and four for the Coney Rams, operating at their own 41-yard line, second play from scrimmage. Morin in the gun, has two to the left and two to the right, all spread out. Gardner will rush three. And the handoff inside to St. Ange, and he smashes up, not for much, maybe a yard or two. And it's going to be third and short. Third down and short, the tackle made by Keegan Kimball. Big hog lineman in there. So third and short. For Parker Morin, St. Ange to his right in the formation, two receivers right, two left. Snap to Morin, hands it off, St. On, spins, first down and more, got away, and got up to the 49-yard line, hit low there by Elijah Farias, but not before the chains move, and we have the first first down of the game. Always good, too, to pick up that first one, like you said, that first one, to get the momentum, sustain a drive, especially on your home field. So first and 10, ball at the 49-yard line of Coney. Morin in the shotgun. Again, they're all spread out. Two and two. Man goes in motion. Right to left. Morin back to throw. Setting up a screen. There's St. Ange. Breaks a tackle and gets away. First down. Anderson St. Ange is down to the 36-yard line. Give him 15. And a first down for Coney. Nice individual effort there by St. Ange because... Gardner actually sniffed that out pretty well, but he's able to break that tackle and then along the sideline, like you said, pick up the first down. Number five, Gavin Flynn into the game. If you're watching our live stream, glad to have you with us. CentralMadeSports.com, 1160thescore.com, and please subscribe to our new YouTube page, Central Maine Sports, where you can always watch our games there as well. First and 10 from the 36. Morin with a running back to either side. And the handoff, right side, two hands wrapped on that football, and that was Flynn, I believe, on the carry. And Flynn is to the 31. Yep. So give him five, second down, and five. Flynn taking that ball security thing super seriously yeah. there. There was no doubt, two hands on that the whole way. It's like he was carrying a big bag of money. <laughs> Second down and four from the 31. Backs to either side. Two receivers left. One to the right inside handoff. St. Ange outside. 20. He is down to the 15-yard line and inside. And a first down for Coney. They'll actually spot him down at the 18. 
So that's a pickup of 13. And Coney on the march here. They are inside the red zone. First and 10, 18. Two to the left, one to the right. I know one of the things talked about in previews is Gardner's defensive and offensive lines are small, and I think that's part of what Scout Hegan took advantage of. All right, right Morin, as he was waiting for the snap, whistles blown and an official's timeout. And I think that's something Coney trying to take advantage of now, too. All right, officials are set. Clock starts, 8.40 left first quarter. Coney on the march, inside handoff, St. Ange, it opens up for him. A gaping hole, and St. Ange has set up a first and goal to go for the Coney Rams at the eight-yard line. You have to talk to Coach Lippert, Mike. Normally we get the whole right, hey, don't say anything until after <laughs> the game starts, but he clearly lied to you about their game plan. Yeah, they've run a little bit, haven't they? Yeah. And two backs on either side of Parker Morin. O'Neal on one side, or Flynn on one side, and St. Ange on the other side. Morin hands the ball off. It's Flynn, wraps that thing up, and he's inside the five to about the four. Gavin Flynn picks up a couple, so it's going to set up a second down. And I think a long four. Yeah, second down and... About four. Morin in the shotgun. One to the right, two to the left. Backs to either side. Flynn on the left, St. Ange on the right. The handoff, St. Ange powers, and he is close to the goal line, but no signal from any of the officials. See here on the replay, he must have got that knee down because it looked like he kind of got up in the air. I thought he fell into the end zone, but uh, about as close, I think, as you can get without getting in. Indeed. So it is third and goal. At the one, wide to the left side is Parker Surgent. Wide to the right side for Coney, Killian Arnold. You got Flynn to the left in the shotgun, and St. Ons to the right. Hand off to St. Ons. He veers left. He powers, and there is no signal. He did not make it. Wow. Kudos to Gardner to stuff uh, on, a, I think, a short one. Evan Mishu came up from the secondary, smelled that out. And made the stop, so it is fourth and goal at the one. I think this is an area, too, uh, with you handing off to St. Ange. But let's see if you can get more and maybe out on the bootleg and see if you can catch Gardner not ready for that. All right, ball on the left hash, backs to either side. Handoff, and he didn't get it. Gardner makes a play. The handoff to Flynn, and he got stopped, actually lost yardage. And the Gardner Tigers bend, but they don't break. A five-minute and 25-second drive by Coney ends with absolutely nothing. How about a response there from that Tiger defensive line? Huge. Because I was going to say the other thing, too, for uh, Gardner that makes Coney scary is uh, you start running the ball like this, that makes play action an option with Surgent. All right, Chase Burgess, first and 10 for the Gardner Tigers. Direct snap into the end zone coming. Quick handoff. No, he kept it. He rounds the left side and scooting up. And a fine run there as he gets up. Actually handed it off. He handed it off to Dominic Weber, I think. Was that 11 on the carry? No, 33. He kept it. You he did. Right. Okay. So where's Chase Burgess? So a nice gain there by Burgess. Gets him out of a hole. A gain of 17. So Burgess... Immediately gives Gardner room to breathe. And the Tigers come out first and 10 from their own 19, 2-2. Two and two. A lot of spread offense tonight. The turn, handoff, nothing. <laughs> Swallowed up whole by the Gardner Tigers. The handoff there to Owen Chadwick. Yeah, that was nothing in a hurry. Jeff Bickford right there all over it. And a loss of a yard. It is second and 11 back up at the 18 now. Burgess brings him out in the shotgun. He's got trips right and one to the left. Burgess claps his hands. Little pitch out to the right side trying to turn the corner. Corey Dingwell. Uh-uh. The Coney defense now stepping up. 
Seemed like uh, Coney's responding well to the backs. They just lost Burgess on that first carry. So it is third down and... I think it would be about 14, yep. I think. Third, we're going to call it 15. Third and 15. So Gardner in a major hole. Two receivers to the right. One wide left, one slot left. And Burgess back to throw. Has a little bit of time. Now flush left side, flips it out, and in the flat it is incomplete. Nowhere near Zach Christen, the intended receiver. So the Coney defense responds and forces a punt. At least with that first down run by Burgess, they have a little bit of room to work with. Yeah, but as you said, too, Coney ought to get great field position, and that's even if this uh, Surgeon, I'm going to guess, yeah, Surgeon returning doesn't touch the ball. So Nick McKay will punt it from around his own five. Snap is good. Kick is end over end. Very returnable. And here's Surgeon with all his speed. Look out! Down the sidelines he goes! And a huge return by Parker Surgeant. How about that for field position, Mike? Yeah, I'd say that's okay. A low line drive, very returnable kick. And Surgeant caught it on the fly and then flew down to the 13-yard line. That's almost like Coney gets a crack again at that failed fourth and goal, basically. So talk about field position, first and 10 for the Rams from the 13. Two to the right, one to the left, man in motion. Here's the direct snap back to Morin, setting up St. Ange on a screen, and Anderson St. Ange is inside the 10. And let's see where they spot him down. I can tell you, I like the play calling from uh, Coney because you got to think Gardner's trying to get up field to be aggressive against that run game, so those, those screens back him off. So he picked up seven. So it's second down and three from the six. Wide to the right side for the Coney Rams, Killian Arnold. Two to the left. Man coming in motion, Morin. In the shotgun, rolls right, looks, looks, flips, got a man in the end zone, but he threw it wide. Wide open in the end zone in the right corner. That was a touchdown waiting to happen. But Morin on the run, threw it wide. The intended receiver, Zach Heidel, could not get there. So it is third and three from the six. And he saw the Gardner, like you said, Gardner pressure just, just enough to keep Morin moving, can't set his feet, and so he can't throw that pass accurately. So Gardner defense made a play there, forced him out of the pocket. Here's third and three from the six. Morin from the gun. Man in motion. Inside handoff to Anderson St. Ange, and he has a clear path. Touchdown, Coney. And he just burst through, and there was nobody there. So talk about a short field, a 13-yard drive in three plays. Comes at the 749 mark, and here's Legatron for the conversion. Landon Foster. Trying to attack the seventh point of the game on the board. Snap good, ball down. He has plenty of distance on it and just got it in that left upright. So with four minutes and 11 seconds left in the first quarter in the 145th edition of the Gardner-Coney matchup, Coney draws first blood. They go 13 yards in three plays. <laughs> Anderson St. Ange goes in from 3-7 to nothing, Coney. Uh, again, Gardner, like I said, in reading some of the previews from coaching comments, uh, they got into it a little bit, obviously, as you heard the coaches uh, here in our pregame. Said Coney, Coney running game, sneaky good. And, again, injuries for that Gardner offense and defensive line. Coney taking advantage. And the scary thing, again, Mike, is that sets up play action and, and more and hasn't even targeted Surgent yet. You know he's going to. That's going to happen. I think we can safely predict that. So Foster ready to kick off here. Seven to nothing Rams. After not converting on fourth and goal at the one, they played defense, got the ball back, got a great punt return from Parker Surgeon. Here's the kickoff return, 20-25 to the 30. And Gardner with decent field position, going to have it first and 10 
from their own 32-yard line on the return there. I that was Braden Elliott. Be curious to see here. Coney obviously keyed really big into the running back. Obviously, um, Burgess, as he showed on the first carry of the game, he's got wheels. Be curious to see if uh, how Gardner adjusts here in their second offensive possession. Brady Davidson wide to the left side. Slot man left. One receiver right. Burgess going to keep it to the right. Burgess right side. Turns it upfield and gets a big gainer. Look at the speed. To midfield, he was actually out of bounds at the 49-yard line. But that's a... 17-yard run, 18, 17-yard run from the 32 to the 49. First and 10 for Gardner. They go no huddle, so they play fast. Backs to either side of Burgess. Direct snap, back to throw, flips it left side. It's caught there in the flat by Evan Mishu, and he is immediately upended by Jeff Bickford. Again. Coney seemingly doing a nice job with the running backs, specifically finding them, hitting them, making them pay. But uh, Burgess is going to be the one you got to focus on. Check that on the tackle. Josh Kidd, 56. Not Jeff Bickford. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Clock running. Three and a half to go in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, Coney. Glad to have you with us tonight on the score. The weather has cooperated. It stopped raining just about game time. Actually, about 15 minutes before. Second down. A little bit more than 10 for Burgess. Inside handoff and scooting up is Owen Chadwick. And Chadwick into Coney territory. They'll spot him down at the 47-yard line. That is a pickup of five. It is second and five. Puts Chadwick in the positive yard mark as well. Three carries, one yard. Well, you got to get over, and he did. All right, all spread out in the backfield. Burgess all by himself, empty backfield. Two and two, he's going to run to the right. And there's room around the corner. Burgess to the 40, 35, and the ball's out. The ball got stripped, and Cody's on it at the 25-yard line. Burgess was on his way, and then all of a sudden, somebody yanked that ball out of his hands. See if I can find that for you, Mike. But that was a comfortable first down. Burgess yeah. may have picked up 17 again. Yeah, he didn't get hit till about the 34. And that's tough to see. He got poked out from behind. So Coney back in business, first and 10 here from their own 24 after the fumble. By Chase Burgess. Burgess had been getting good gains running the football. Had one there. Oh, man! Almost an interception of a screen pass in the backfield looking for Parker Surgeon. Evan Mishu almost picked that off. That would have been crazy. Uh, they had that one scouted pretty well. At some point, obviously, if you're Gardner, you know number three is going to touch the ball. Wow, Morin. Almost made a critical mistake there. Instead, it's just a dangerous incompletion. And it's second and 10 from the 24. Twins right, twins left. Morin with Anderson St. Ange in the backfield right to his right. Man coming in motion. Morin going to throw it. Middle screen, and it's incomplete. Incent intended, that is, for St. Ange at the 24-yard line. He would have been gobbled up anyway if he had caught the ball. That's already, what, the third, third, fourth time they've gone to that specific play. One thing we haven't seen yet tonight, A.J., is that, that, that slant by Parker Surgeon over the middle that we've seen him break. Yeah, that, uh, the bubble screen, I think we saw the little flare outs. So we got a little bit of it, but normally we've seen them load up one side with Surgeon in that bubble and then flip it over to him and get some blockers. Surgeon is wide left right now. Third and 10 from the 24 for Parker Morin. Morin has plenty of time. He's going long. Surgeon in there. Makes the catch. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. 76 yards to Parker Surgeon. That'll work. Let's get Parker Surgeon involved. And they did. That Gardner, too, as you saw, he says a step, as you'll get to see here on the replay. 
He's got a step. Gardner defender catches up with him. Tries to give him a shove out of bounds. Unfortunately, Surgeon just running full speed. Keeps full balance there, and he just goes the other 20 yards of the house. That was a brilliantly thrown football by Parker Morin. You could not have thrown the ball any better. Foster for the conversion. It's up, and it is good. With 2.10 left first quarter, Coney has scored again. The score, the Rams 14, and the Gardner Tigers nothing. Keeping you on 1,000-yard season watch, Mike. Uh, let me do some quick math here. Of course, my strong suit. Right. Surgeon coming in had 56 catches, 831 yards, 11 touchdowns, so now give him 907 yards and 12 touchdowns on 57 catches. As we say, he's gaining on her. <laughs> very, very much could break 1,000 tonight. So the Coney Rams, despite not converting on a fourth and goal at the one, have scored two touchdowns since. And they have shown their speed for sure. Parker Surgent and of course, scoring on a deep one against his father's old team, the Gardner Tigers, where the old man won the Fitzy in 1997. And you got to see a highlight of him in our pregame. Indeed. All right, here's the kick. Foster squibs it. And, oh, on the sidelines it's picked up. Veering to the right and all kinds of trouble there on the return for Eben Whalen, a freshman who went down in the corner there, and unfortunately for him, that ball didn't go out of bounds. Yeah, he was waiting on that. And he had to pick it up and try to do something, and he did what he could, which was not much, so it's going to be first and 10 for Gardner. Looks like their 14-yard line. As we heard Coach uh, Munsey say in the pregame, right, What do you, you asked him specifically, what do you have to do to win this game? Turnovers. No turnovers. Yep, it's so critical. So Burgess and company, first and ten, locked deep in their own territory, but they've been there before and got out of it on a nice run by Burgess. Chase Burgess, first and ten from his own 13 in the shotgun. Burgess hands the ball off, and not much there. Coney's defense up to the task. And in the backfield for the Rams. 25. Was that 25 on the carry or 25 on the tackle? On the carry. Okay, 25 on the carry was Evan Mishu. And the tackle was made by Evan Pitcher. So a gain of just a yard. Yeah, two, four carries, two yards combined for the running backs for Gardner yeah. tonight thus far. Second and nine from the 14. It's 14 to nothing, Coney. Man comes in motion from the right side. Back to throw Burgess. Flushed out to the right. Now he's got to take off. Look out. He can go. 25, 30 to the 35. He has that football in his left hand. He's still in bounds to the 45 into midfield and down at the 45-yard line of the Cody Rams. So a huge run of 41 yards for Chase Burgess. And I will say he does carry the ball a little loosely to me, A.J. Well, we've already seen it once, and you see he doesn't go down at first contact either. So first and ten for Gardner. No huddle. At the Coney 45. One minute left first quarter. It's been an action-packed opener for sure. Burgess inside handoff and just nothing. That play has not worked out very well tonight for the Gardner Tigers. That was Owen Chadwick on the carry, and Chadwick got absolutely swallowed up there by Johnny Letry. And so it'll be second down and 10. Second down and 10 for Gardner. Tigers need to strike here, down 14 zip. Burgess brings him out at the Coney 45. Two to the right, two to the left, one running back. Why did the clock stop? Good question. Official pause, I think. Yep. yep, official pause. All right, there's the startup. Second down and 10 from the 45. Burgess calls for the ball, flips it out a little bit lazy there on the pass to Davidson, and Davidson with nowhere to go. you got to snap it out there faster than that. He got about a yard. Yeah, that one hung up there dangerously, especially when that play specifically, you know there's going to be a lot of traffic. And that should run the clock out for the first quarter down to 10 now. First quarter in the books in the 145th edition of Gardner and Coney on the gridiron.
Coney's got the jump. Score after one. Coney Rams 14, Gardner Tigers nothing. You're watching and listening to high school football on the score. Looking to begin or further your career in manufacturing and don't know where to start? Miss State Machine is in need of CNC machinists at our Winslow facility where we manufacture components for some of the most exciting industries, aerospace, defense, power generation. I'm Jeremy Stanford, Manufacturing Manager, and I personally want to invite you to come learn about the great pay and benefits MidState Machine has to offer. To apply, visit MidStateUSA.com. That's MidStateUSA.com, an equal opportunity employer. Come grow with us. Oh, please start. You wouldn't allow your car to bypass its maintenance, would you? Hey, Jen, would you look this up on your computer? Oh, wish I could. This office computer is so slow. How about your computer maintenance? Trust the pros at Computer Improvements. They can come on site or stop by. Handling general maintenance, antivirus protection, hardware upgrades, and Computer Improvements can set you up with solid-state hardware memory, giving your operating system wicked fast response time due to less moving parts. So your day isn't like this. Contact Computer Improvements to schedule your service today. Computer Improvements, downtown Skowhegan. Mike Filet, A.J. Knight, back here at Fuller Field in Augusta. Galen Neal is our videographer here tonight. Third nine for the Gardner Tigers at the Coney 44. It is Coney 14, Gardner nothing. Chase Burgess in the shotgun, as both teams do all the time. And Coney jumping left side, maybe offsides. Reagan McManus. Uh, head ref said, nope, Coney. Yep, so encroachment on Coney. That's the first flag of the game. Well, minus the opening kickoff. Oh, correct. Yeah. So the second flag of the game. Big deal, though, for Gardner, obviously, makes this much more manageable and, and in more in four-down territory. Third down and four. Fake handoff, and Burgess keeps spins. He gets the 35. He needed to get a little bit inside that. So let's see where the all-important spot is. Chase Burgess on... Third down and four. They spot it shy of the 35, so that is short of the first. So he did not make it. And it is fourth down and less than a yard. Burgess waiting for the play. Wristband check, a little study hall. And here's the fourth and one call at the 35-yard line. Wide to the right side is Brady Davidson. Burgess in the gun. Sends a man in motion, perhaps a jet sweep. That play was doomed from the start. Flags come down. Some people moved, some people didn't. And let's let the officials sort it out. A little confusion here for the refs. I think Gardner was confused, and I think the officials are confused. Well, because because Burgess clapped, right? He got the snap, but then nobody moved. Illegal proceed, huh? And he did false. He did everything. He did illegal procedure and offsides. How 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 can that be? I don't get it. It's a five yard penalty against Coney, so it's going to be a first down for Gardner. So they get a freebie. Now, that definitely prevents them from having to make a tough choice. Well, to potentially make a disastrous choice, I guess, I suppose. So it's first and 10 for the Tigers at the 30-yard line of Coney. Trips right. They're loaded there. Burgess inside handoff after faking a handoff. He pitched it to Mishu, and Evan Mishu runs around left tackle, gets a couple. Yeah, I don't think that's the play because Coney in the in the middle of the defensive line has been really stout, so that long developing play, I understand misdirection. Just I think they're in the spot where they need to be. Second down and nine at the twenty nine. Gardner Tigers trying to get on the scoreboard here, trailing fourteen to nothing. Burgess with a full house backfield. He's got running backs on either side and a back behind him as the eye back. And the handoff, and the ball is on the ground. The ball was handed off supposedly to miss you, and that play was disastrous. As Burgess picked up that ball after he faked it or was supposed to hand it off, one or the other, I'm not sure. And yep. he ended up getting maybe a yard or two on the play, so it's third down and about seven. Yep. 
Uh, that uh, another opportunity there, like you said, Mike. That's always on that mesh. You got to be decisive, and I think that obviously running back didn't think he was taking it. Burgess thought he was taking it. Third down and seven from the twenty-seven yard line. Burgess calls for the ball, fakes, flips it left side. It's incomplete in the flat. Ball was thrown too far to the sidelines. The intended receiver, Owen Chadwick, so it is fourth and seven. Now already 0 for 4 on third down for Gardner thus far. And Burgess, his strong suit is clearly not throwing the ball. He has missed a lot tonight. Fourth and seven. At the 27, 9.15 to play first half, 14 to nothing. Coney, here's Burgess in the gun. Has two to the left and two to the right. Back to throw. Burgess has plenty of time. Looking, looking, flag down. This will get called back no matter what happens. Burgess runs with the ball and is out of bounds at the 25-yard line, but this will be coming back. It's going to be a penalty here on Gardner. Yeah, normally, right, when you get all that time, it's uh, usually because there's something uh, going on illegal in the backfield. It is holding on Gardner. So declined, of course, on a fourth down play where they did not get the first down. So it'll be first and ten for Coney. And they will take it over at the 27-yard line. Oh, where was that original line of scrimmage? So first and ten for the Rams. Up 14 to nothing. And they take over here at their own 27-yard line. All things Coney tonight. Here's Parker Morin in the shotgun. Quick handoff to the inside. That is Flynn. And Gavin Flynn, after that quick handoff, getting a short gain of about three. It'll be second and seven. Tonight's game is brought to you by Central Maine Community College in Auburn, where you can get over 40 academic degrees and programs. Find your passion. Talk to them about free tuition and more. Go to cmcc.edu. A gain of two seconds and about eight. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. It's 14 to nothing, Coney. Morin, a play fake, looking to throw it, and just threw it in the ground. There was nothing there, and that's a smart play by Parker Morin. The pass in the flat intended for Anderson St. Ange, that's the way they drew it up, but Gardner was all over it, out there covering for the Tigers, Owen Chadwick. So a smart play by Morin to bury it. Yes. Live, to, live to play another down third and eight. Last thing you want to do too, Mike, obviously with the lead is is give them a, a, a turnover here in super plus territory. Third down and eight from the 28th. Surgeon, who's got a 76-yard touchdown catch, wide left. Morin, the pocket rolls left. He flips it down there. Surgeon is inbounds, and he makes the catch at the 39-yard line. That is a first down for Coney. Man, then you see that. I think you see specifically as we show you the replay here again, you see the effect of him burning him for 76. There's nobody. He makes that break, and there's no Gardner defender within five yards. And the ball dropped in nicely by Parker Morin, too. First and 10, put him at the 40-yard line, and a gain of 12 there. So Morin closing in, or Surgeon, that is, closing in on 100 yards for the night and 1,000 for the year. Yeah, 88 tonight. First and 10 from the 40. Man in motion, Morin flips it out in a flat, and it's snuffed out immediately. Killian Arnold caught the ball, and then boom, he got hit by Owen Shadwick and dropped. Yeah, that screen on that long side. Not pat, working. Yeah, that long side of the field just gives Gardner that much more time to catch up to it. It is not working. More importantly, Mike, you know, if a cornerback, Gardner reads that a second sooner and you step in front of that, that's six. Green grass and high tides yeah. forever. 7.45 left in the first half. 14 to nothing, Coney. Second and 11 for the Rams from their own 36. Morin in the shotgun. Two and two. Back to throw. Oodles of time. Going deep. There's Surgeon again. He will run away for a touchdown. That one is a 64-yard strike. 
and it's 20 to nothing, Coney. How, single coverage again, and how about again, uh, credit the Coney offensive line, right? Morin had all day as we show you this replay again. It's camped back there, and Surgeon just runs away. A good three yards there, diving attempt there, no good. So Coney goes 73 yards, 64 of it gobbled up on the Morin to Surgent pass. Here's Foster for the conversion, two of two for the night. And it is up and good. And with 7.23 left in the second quarter, it is all Coney. The Rams, 21, and the Gardner Tigers, nothing. 152 yards on three catches tonight for Parker Surgeon, and I know, Mike, you want me to do the math again. Yep. And because I'm a team player, I got you. So coming into tonight, he needed 169 to hit 1,000. He's at 152. Holy boy. What a night for Parker Morin and Parker Surgeon. It is a lethal combination, and you cannot single cover Parker Surgeon. No. It is impossible. There is nobody who can run with him. Yeah. He is a lethal weapon. Uh, Coney's at home, so it doesn't have the same ring. But if I was Gardner in the pregame festivities, as soon as uh, Surgeon came out of the locker room, I would have had him double covered. Yep, that's the way to go. So Foster to kick off with Coney leading 21 to nothing. And he drills this one deep. The return starts at the 9 to the 10 to the 15 to the 20. And over the 25 to about the 28-yard line. So first and 10 Tigers. And on the return there was Owen Chadwick. Always curious, Mike. I, obviously, you got a chance to talk to both coaches. We had them on in the pregame. Did you Have you heard heads or tails of what, what Surgeon's doing next year? He's a senior, obviously. Got a, got a hard time not believing somebody doesn't look at that and say, yeah, we, we need that speed. We can use a little bit of that. He's going to Thomas to play basketball. Is he really? Yes, he is. Okay. He is going to Thomas to play basketball. He's a dynamic basketball player. All right, first and 10 for Gardner. Jet sweep on the right side. That's Kyle Duty on the carry, and Duty able to at least turn it upfield a little bit before he got dropped by Reagan McManus. A gain of about four for Gardner. Second down and six. Yeah, Surgent will go to Thomas and play basketball. But, man, that speed plays on the football field, too. Tell you what, if... Uh, Thomas needs to start a football program. Yeah, no, <laughs> just for Surgent. I, I mean, I think I would, uh, if I'm the baseball program, it just, just come steal bases. Come yeah. steal bases. Herb Washington, does that name mean anything to you, AJ? Sounds familiar. I'll explain in a minute. Second down and five. You have to be old enough to know. Back to throw. Is Burgess flushed from the top pocket by Bickford. Now he fires. Down and picked off. No, dropped. A sure fire interception by Lance Terrio at midfield. Burgess threw it right to him, and he dropped it. Now, I'm not sure what uh, Burgess was looking at there, but like you said, that was right in the arms. And I think uh, Coney got a little bit excited there about the return and just didn't seal the interception. So it's a very dangerous incompletion. And it is third and five. Burgess has been an adventure throwing the ball tonight. He's been much better running it. Third down and five from the 34. Man going in motion. Jet sweep to that man going in motion. That's Cody Dingwell. Dingwell turns it up, and he has got the first down. A long run there, but the extra effort finally pushes him over the first down. That's the first third down conversion in five attempts for Gardner thus far tonight. So Herb Washington was a sprinter, an Olympic sprinter, who was signed by Charlie Finley, the owner of the Oakland A's, in 1974 to be a designated runner. All he did was run. He pinch ran, would come in and steal bases. That's all he did. I'm just he saying. had no baseball skills whatsoever. <laughs> Just speed. Google him. Yeah. Herb, Herb Washington. First and 10 from the 42. A fake, and the quarterback Burgess keeps, and Burgess over the 45 to about the 46. A short gain there of four. A lot of quick action there with the fake handoff. And then Burgess picking up about four. It'll be second and six. A running clock, 545 to go first half. By my count, seven carries for Burgess for 101 yards and a fumble lost. Indeed, that fumble big. Davidson wide to the right. Burgess in the gun. 
Two receivers to the left. He keeps it. Burgess to the 50-yard line. And it'll set up after the keeper to the left. A third down and short. Third and about two. Just shy of midfield. Tomorrow, in the rain, it'll be Winslow and Foxcroft Academy. The undefeated ponies are 7-0. and Every time we go to Winslow, it's crazy good. Yeah, it's exciting. 1 o'clock. In what we hear is going to be a rainy afternoon. The turn, the handoff, and that is a first down. Burgess handed it off. And I believe that was Chadwick on the carry. And that is a first down run. No, it was not Chadwick. It was Kyle Duty. So it's a first down for the Tigers. Ball just over the 48. So it's first and 10 from the 47. Wide to the right side, Cody Dingwell. Two receivers left, handoff, up the gut. They go to Duty, and Duty hit immediately. Bickford in on the stop there for Coney, also for the Rams. Josh Kidd. Yeah, Duty was swarmed immediately. Burgess keeps that. I think he's able to get around to the right side there with a lot of space. Yeah, he's got something if he does. Yeah. He's been close to busting about two of them. He's got great speed, no doubt about it. Second down and nine from the 47. Davidson wide to the right, the tight end. The slot man is Dingwell. Duty is the fullback right beside Burgess. Burgess rolling right, looking, looking. There is nobody open, and he goes out of bounds in front of the Coney bench at about the 43-yard line, a gain of about four. He had to run a long way to get that. And out there hunting him was Bodie King-Jones. Yeah, credit to Burgess because Coney did a nice job. They brought a blitz off that backside, and it looked like they were going to string out enough front side pressure to just run him out of bounds. But Burgess, with that speed, able to find a little bit of a corner and get a four out of it. So it'll be third and five. Clock at four minutes to go in the half. Coney leading 21 to nothing. And it could have been more. They had a fourth and goal at the one and couldn't convert. So it is second down at five. Excuse me, third down at five. Burgess in the gun. Waits for the snap. Calls for it. Fakes the handoff. He's going to roll to the left. And there's room out there. And Burgess squares his shoulders. Has the first down. He is inside the 25-yard line. And there's a late flag thrown into the ground by the line judge. And this is probably going to go on Gardner and negate that long run I th- I think it's by actually, Burgess. I, there was a, potentially a blindside block. Nope, you're right. This one now I'm looking like holding. I thought there was a blindside block on the place where Burgess got the kind of popped out to the sideline. But based on how they're marking this off, I think you're right, Mike. It's going to be something in the area of a hold. Contact to the head. Isn't that what he said? Hold on. I don't know what that. That's the targeting symbol in college, right? Do we know what that call is? Whatever it is, it negates a first down. An illegal block of some sort. I, that, bl- that, 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 um, I think it was a blindside block. Or crack back. That signal by the referee, not one that I'm aware of. So it's going to bring it back from the spot of the foul. So it's still third down and five. It happened pretty far downfield. Back to throw. Burgess. Rushed. Rushed. Hit. And down to the ball's up. It's picked up by Cody. The ball is out. It's picked up by Flynn. And Flynn won't go down. Finally, he is brought to the ground. And Burgess tonight, ball security has not been his forte. And Coney has the football at the 37-yard line. Burgess' second cough up of the game. And Burgess got absolutely hammered. So the ball at the 38 officially. Second Burgess fumble. And Coney with a 21 to nothing lead. With a great opportunity here to add to it.
Rams come out first and 10 from the Gardner 38-yard line. Parker Morin has St. Ange right beside him. The turn, the give, and he dropped the ball! He dropped the ball, and Gardner gets it right back. How about that? Turnovers on successive plays, and Gardner's got it right back on a fumble by St. Ange. They have it at their own 35-yard line. Yeah, he just he just left it right there. It was in his back pocket, just didn't secure it. Ball security. So back the other way we go. First and ten for Gardner from their own 40. Chase Burgess, two fumbles that Coney has recovered tonight, trying to hang on to that ball. Calls for it, turns, hands it off to Chadwick. Chadwick to the 45, to the 46. And just a herd of Coney Rams there in on the stop, led by Caden Veyu. And, and that's a gain of six. Got to be a little bit of a concern for Gardner, right? Because Burgess is probably your best offensive weapon. And he's uh, yep. lost it once on a strip there. I mean, he gets it's a strip sack and just trying to fight for that third down. But still. And I believe they have made a change oh, at they quarterback. Have. Because that's Asher Nagy in there. Good call. So Nagy is in. And Burgess is out, which is an interesting move by Patrick Munzing. So two fumbles gets Burgess a seat. And it is third and four for the new quarterback here, Asher Nagy, who is a sophomore. Where's number eight for those of you watching on the stream? Nagy checking the wristband. And a third down and four now at the 46. Here's the snap. Here's the turn. Here's the handoff, and there's a big hole and a first down for the Gardner Tigers slashing through there quickly. Owen Chadwick, a first down. That play opened up quickly, and Gardner moves the chains. Yeah, if you're Coney, you got to think, depending, I mean, backup QB comes in, right? The thought process has got to be they're not, they're not going to throw it. All right, first and ten. Gardner operating from its own 48-yard line for Asher Nagy. Sends a man in motion. That's Dingwell. And another fumble, and this one's recovered by Coney. So it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback for Gardner. They're fumbling Josh Kidd on the recovery. And Coney gets it right back. And again, that's the same as the St. On try to hand it off there. And Chadwick just drops it. And Chadwick, I don't even think, thought he was supposed to get it because he went and blocked. So Coney takes over at their own 49. 157 left in the first half. They have all their timeouts. And great field position for Parker Morin and company. First and 10 from the 49, leading 21 to nothing. Morin. Looking to throw and bombs away and overthrows his receiver. It's not Parker Surgent. Downfield, it's Ethan Demons. And Demons was wide open. He but was. He, he just stopped. That is six if he gets to the wall. Yeah, Demons, I think, just got into wide open space and camped. And Morin wanted to lead him on that uh, uh, post route, excuse me, corner route to the, the sideline. Otherwise, like you said, he's up the sideline. That's six. That's 51 yards to the house. Second and 10 from the 49. Stopped clock. 151 left in the half. Full complement of timeouts for Coney Morin. Hands off St. Ange. St. Ange, nothing there as he goes right. Got back to the line of scrimmage. And that was the end of that as Gardner blew it up big time in on the tackle. Keegan Kimball. So a no-gainer there, third and 10. Coming up at the half, excuse me, A.J., we will have the first half stats, all of the partial scores from around the state on the final Friday night of 11-man football. It will all be brought to you by Hammond Lumber Company, serving Maine and New Hampshire from 22 locations, your building project partner. I was just going to say, it seems like both coaches got a little bit a little bit conservative all of a sudden, right? Pulled back just a little bit after seeing Fumble Palooza here in the second quarter. And Gardner, or, uh, Coney taking... 
loads of time here in the huddle. They have wasted, and now they take a timeout. That was odd. They wasted about 30 seconds there. So let's reset things for you. Brought to you by Midstate Machine. If you're looking for a career, check out the Machinist Development Program at MidstateUSA.com. We have 58.9 seconds left in the first half. And the Gardner Tigers have been on their heels the entire first half. Coney Rams have scored three touchdowns. Anderson St. Ange on a six-yard run. Parker Surgeon, a 76-yard touchdown pass. And then Surgeon, another long one, a 64-yard pass to make it 21 to nothing. Landed Foster perfect on the night. And our game reset brought to you by Midstate Machine. MidstateUSA.com if you are looking for a career. So Coney now with a third and 10 from the 49. Two timeouts left. Yeah, I'm surprised. I, I, is that a case, Mike, where maybe Lippert wanted to burn some time in case you don't get this so you don't leave a ton left? Even still, you're going to punt, you would think, make Gardner have to drive most of the length of the field? It's just curious, like you said, for them to burn 30 seconds and then take a timeout. So third and 10. Coney from its own 49 with a 21 to nothing lead. Let's see what B.L. Lippert does after the timeout. Surgeon's wide left. Backs to either side of Morin in the backfield. Back to throw. Setting up. Throws downfield and underthrows his man. It is incomplete. Intended downfield for Ethan Demons. Very underthrown. So it is fourth and ten. And they're going to punt. I gotta be honest, I think Sergeant broke open late there, but I like that play because Sergeant takes all the coverage with him and Demons finds some space, but like you said, Moore and just didn't get it there. Elliott back to return to punt along with Eben Whalen. Warren will punt it. Get rid of it near his own 40. Nice high spiral. Good punt there. It's out of bounds. And they spot it out. Somebody better stop the clock. There it goes. Wow. Seven seconds later. The last minute and a half here have been kind of weird. A little Coney, bit. Coney let the clock run down, did nothing, and took a timeout. And they were in great position, first and 10 from their own 49. Talk about fizzling out there. And then the clock... Kept running after the punt went out of bounds. So we're at 40.3 seconds left in the half. I think the refs have a discussion about that. The other thing, too, Mike, is part of that for Coney's a little bit self-inflicted. Dimmons was wide open twice for big plays. And Parker Morin, and the first one, Dimmons stopped and Morin wanted to lead him. The second one, Dimmons ran the right route, and Parker Morin just didn't get it to him. All right, 42 seconds left. Yeah, it was a little bit more than that. Asher Nagy. In the shotgun all by himself. Bringing a man in motion. Fake to duty. He'll keep it himself. Left side tries to get around the corner being chased by Kidd. And Kidd did a good job to string him out. But still a nice gain there for Asher Nagy. A gain of seven or eight yards. He got out of bounds for what it's worth. 33.9 seconds left. Yeah, like you said, solid gain. Problem is it took a long time. Yeah. He ran a long way to the left to finally square up. Second and one. So Chase Burgess replaced by Asher Nagy. Two fumbles by Burgess. Nagy's fumbled as well. Second down and one. The turn, the handoff, and that's a first down run to the 40-yard line. On the carry there was Duty. Kyle Duty, the junior, getting... To the 45 is where they'll sport, excuse me, 40 is where they'll spot him. They'll stop the clock, move the sticks. And when they get in place, they'll start it up again. But I believe we've got a timeout taken here by Gardner. We do. 30 yeah. seconds left in the half. Yeah, they burned one. Uh, dude, uh, excuse me, uh, Nagy was the sixth ball carrier for the Tigers tonight when he took that, uh, took that carry two, two plays ago. So they've spread it around. Problem been, like you said, turnovers. Burgess has lost two, and then on the handoff uh, between Nagy and Chadwick, you lose another one. And that one hurts, obviously, because you get a break with St. Ange dropping the one after Burgess's second fumble, 
and you give it right back to Coney, though, like you said, that last possession by Coney was just super weird, and they don't really do anything with it. Yeah, not much of anything at all there. It's very strange for B.L. Lippert, who normally is right on the stick when it comes to making decisions offensively. That wasn't great. So it'll be a first and ten for Gardner out of the out of the timeout. With 30 seconds left in the half. Let's see what Patrick Munzing has up his sleeve here. On second and ten. Excuse me, no, first and ten. At the 40. First and ten. Nagy in the gun. Back to throw. Nagy flips it left side. Downfield! Man wide open, going down the left sideline and out of bounds for the Gardner Tigers is Owen Chadwick. They, so. they ran a fake bubble screen, and Chadwick just was all by himself running down the sideline. He was all alone. I mean lonesome all alone down the left sideline. Gets out of bounds at the 15-yard line, and Gardner's in business. They've got 22 seconds to work with. And now Coney takes a timeout with 22 seconds left in the first half. So a late surge here by the Gardner Tigers. Trying to get on the scoreboard after being blitzed and falling behind 21 to nothing. Just one of those cases where Coney didn't stay disciplined. They jumped on that bubble screen, and one of those things where you were super aggressive on what would have been a five-yard gain, and they just completely lose Chadwick down the sideline. If it's not for St. Ange, uh, St. Ange had a good angle, excuse me. Uh, one of the linebackers finally caught up and pushed him out of bounds, but chance there is Chadwick almost took that to the house. Very close to scoring. First and ten. For the Gardner Tigers at the Coney 15 in the 145th edition of Gardner and Coney on the gridiron. And, Mike, the other thing, got to talk about it, right? Patriots territory is a big chance for Gardner because they get the ball to start the second yeah. half. Yep. You got a chance to score here and score to start the second half. First and 10 from the 15 for Nagy at quarterback. He has two to the right, two to the left. Back to throw. Looking right side, throws it up, and it is incomplete. Lots of air under that ball as it parachuted down at the 10-yard line. And I think that came. That had to have come out of his hand funny because that was a rainbow, and he had someone breaking back corner, I think, would have had a chance. But that I, had to have just rolled out of his hand funny. So incomplete. Stops the clock with 16.5 seconds left. And it's second and 10 at the 15-yard line. Second and 10 for sophomore quarterback Asher Nagy. Two to the right. Nagy calls for the ball. Back to throw. Looking. It's tipped. It's up in the air, and it's incomplete. An interception waiting to happen. But it didn't. Ball tipped high into the air and falls incomplete. It'll be third and 10 for Gardner at the 15-yard line. Clock stops on the incompletion with 11 seconds to go. Second time tonight, I think, Coney. That one, I think, despite having to make the dive there, very catchable. Twice now, I think Coney has given Gardner gifts by not making interceptions. So we have seen a lot of follies with the ball tonight for sure. Third and 10 for Gardner at the 15. Wide to the right side, Braden Elliott. Nagy in the gun. Fires it right side. It's caught by Elliott. Cuts inside against the grade. He is in the end zone or not. Yes, touchdown Gardner. Braden Elliott, a 15-yard run after a catch. And Gardner's on the board. How about the individual play there by Elliott? All Braden Elliott there. So Elliott with a 15-yard catch, and Gardner takes a timeout after they score the touchdown. It came, by the way, with no time left on the clock. Well, no, with all the scrambling that Elliott had to do to show the replay here is he got to cut back into the center, 
He had to break through a couple tackles there, kind of push the pile there at the end. If he doesn't do the, uh, that, I mean, that burns all the clock there, but it doesn't matter ultimately as he crosses into pay dirt. So the Gardner Tigers on the board after going to their backup quarterback, Asher Nagy. And they have cut the lead to 21-6, to and now a timeout after the touchdown to decide how they're going to handle this conversion. And it looks like they'll go for two. No. Nope, they're going to kick. It's Nagy who's going to kick. And it'll be Dominic Weber on the hold. So Patrick Munzing will not chase points, which is a smart move. Snap is not really good, but handled nicely there by Weber, and it's put through by Nagy. Good job there by the holder, Dominic Weber, to get that down. So that's it. That's the end of the first half. Gardner Tigers with a late touchdown score at halftime in the 145th matchup ever between the Gardner Tigers and the Coney Rams on the football field. It's Coney, 21, Gardner, 7. We are back on the score with halftime brought to you by Hammond Lumber after this on the score. Are you fed up with high prices at the pump? Do monthly utility bills drain your wallet? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather-tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. Don't miss out. Call Renewal by Anderson today. Notice the price of gas and oil lately? Thinking about a pellet stove? Pellets are a renewable resource that are economical, and pellet stoves don't have to be ugly or loud. Come talk to us at Somerset Stone and Stove. Let us explain why now is the best time to have your pellet stove installed. Wouldn't you love to have a gas stove or fireplace designed for your home? Let Somerset Stone and Stove design and install a Regency gas stove or fireplace that is just right for you. Let us customize your Regency gas stove or fireplace while you enjoy the beauty and warmth. Visit Somerset Stone and Stove in Oakland. I came for a visit and I just fell in love with it. They just want to see you be you and like just excel. There's a lot of opportunities here. It really gives me time to figure out what I want to do with my life. It's a good stepping stone to get to where you want to be. The tuition is definitely part of what brought me here. You know, credits transfer, that's huge, especially for a community college when you're trying to figure out what you want. CM's the best place. Honestly, it's the best place. You got to be here to experience it. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course, Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Randy Belanger purchased the Harry J. Smith Company over seven years ago, knowing his customers expected the same quality service as they have always received for over 100 years. With 10 bays and 12 employees, we can have most of your repairs done the same day. Whether it's on your car, truck, or RV, we can handle it. Just call us and let us go to work for you. The Harry J. Smith Company, 13 Sanger Avenue in Waterville, keeping your vehicle on the road for over 100 years and doing it the right way. At P.J. Diggs, they know septic systems. Maybe your existing system is failing or it's a new house lot. You need new installation. Call P.J. Diggs. They can bring their site evaluator to design the right septic system. Headed to camp? Ditch the outhouse for a newly installed system. How about a septic system for your campsite? Imagine your own private campground. Already have a septic design? P.J. Diggs can install it for you. Call 431-4299. That's 431-4299. At P.J. Diggs, they know septic systems. One third. Hinkley Road, Canaan. Dixon's Country Market on the Nick Road, Benton has it all. Sunoco gas and 24-hour diesel, plus a jam-packed store with what you need to grab and go. And so much succulent food. Huge sandwiches, delicious wraps, and hand-tossed fresh dough-loaded pizza. They have drinks, snacks, fresh meat and cheese in their deli counter, plus local Livelies products that won't cost you a lot of money. And remember those whoopie pies. Delightful, delicious Dixon's Country Market in Benton. Supporting local high school sports. Whittemore & Sons, your Coyote tractor dealer. Dependable sales and service for over 50 years. We are located on the Waterville Road in Skowhegan. 
Sales and service by a family who cares. Mike Violet, AJ Knight's back here live at Fuller Field in Augusta, the 145th edition of the Coney Rams and the Gardner Tigers on the football field. And the Coney Rams leading here by a score of 21 to 7. And actually, they could have 27 or 28 points because they left a touchdown on the field. But let's talk about the touchdowns that were scored. Anderson St. Ange scored the first one at the 749 mark of the first quarter. Talk about a short field. They only had to go 13 yards after a 41-yard punt return by Parker Surgeon. So St. Ange goes six for the score. Landon Foster with a conversion. Seven to nothing. Coney at that point in the game. And then... B.L. Lippert turned Parker Surgent loose. A 74-yard bomb from Parker Morin. Foster with the conversion. That made it 14 to nothing. A 76-yard drive there by the Coney Rams. And then in the second quarter, they opened up Parker Surgent again. This time, he went 64 yards for a touchdown on a bomb from Parker Surgent. Foster with the extra point. And it was 21 to nothing. Coney, a 73-yard drive. There's 64 of it in one big bunch to Parker Morin. Then Gardner, late in the first half, caught fire, drove it down the field, and Braden Elliott catches a pass from Asher Nagy, their backup quarterback, on the right sideline, kind of over in the flat on the sideline, peeled it back to the middle, took it in, powered his way into the end zone. Nagy with a conversion, and that's how we got here 21 to seven. Halftime is brought to you by Hammond Lumber Company, serving Maine and New Hampshire from 22 locations, your building project partner. Find them online at HammondLumber.com. AJ Knight's got numbers for us at halftime. Yeah, for Gardner Burgess, 10 carries, 105 yards, promise, two fumbles lost. He got replaced by uh, Nagy, like you said, two for four, 60 yards, touchdown. Uh, on the other side, more in seven for 13, 178 yards, two touchdowns, and then St. Ange, nine rushes, 36 yards, fumble lost. I think for Gardner, though, you take it as a win because you're trailing two touchdowns. You're going to get the ball to open the second half, and you're, you're trailing despite the fact you're losing the turnover margin 3-1. to one. Give me Surgent's numbers again, please. Surgent has three catches, 152 yards, and two touchdowns. <laughs> the not, the not definition bad. of efficiency. Indeed, yeah, three for 152 and two touchdowns. So we are going to... After the game, if I can find that little slip of paper that I had. I don't know what the heck I did with it. The Great American Rivalry people are here tonight celebrating Gardner and Coney being a Great American Rivalry. And if you go on Facebook, you can find... Their Facebook page, Great American Rivalry, they have featured this quite a bit this week, and we will vote for an MVP for tonight's game, AJ, and I have a feeling I know who the early clubhouse leader is. Hard not to argue when you think about the fact that St. Ange's touchdown for Coney, which is the only non surgeon touchdown, was set up by the big punt return from Parker Surgeon. Right, so when you look at the all-purpose yardage tonight, Parker Surgeon is over 200 for sure. He has had... Just an absolutely fantastic night there. Honoring the 2013 Coney Rams here at the half. They won the state championship. And also Ben Lucas, the quarterback on that team, who won the Fitzpatrick Trophy that year, is having his jersey retired tonight. Wow. Well, as you said, that they've had some good ones, specifically at the QB position here for uh, Coney, and I got to tell you, we talked a lot, right, about Doucette and the the wonder that he is. Obviously, we had the Lawrence game where he kind of got showed that he was human, but uh, Morin is no slouch either. So those men now, ten years after the fact, in their late twenties, all convening here. And now down to our right, Matt, uh, excuse me, Ben Lucas's family being introduced. So our score at the half, the Coney Rams 21, the Gardner Tigers 7. We'll take a timeout. Back with more of our halftime brought to you by Hammond Lumber Company. After this on the score. 
over 30 years ago, Paul and Jonna Bowen set out on a mission to help aging Mainers stay in their own homes. Assistance Plus grew from their passion, dedication, and integrity, where clients come first. Today, Assistance Plus serves not only the elderly, but clients with developmental and behavioral health challenges. Assistance Plus, here for you today and through all points of your life. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Over 40 academic degrees and programs recognized as some of the best in the United States. Nursing, criminal justice, forensic, psychology, IT, education, culinary arts, and so much more. Offering one of the lowest tuition rates in New England. Plus, a top-seeded national champion producing athletics department. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Find your passion. Go to cmcc.edu. 201 Tire Battery and Service and the Goodyear Credit Card for all your auto needs with great benefits. Six-month financing when you buy $250 or more. Subject to credit approval, terms and conditions apply. Double savings on select Goodyear tires via mail-in rebate. Accepted at Exxon and mobile locations nationwide. The Goodyear Credit Card, the complete solution. 201 Tire Battery and Service on the Augusta Basilboro Line. Get yours. Apply now. Nothing brings people together like good food. So when you're cooking for the ones you love, why trust anyone but Joseph's Market? Joseph's Market is famous for their fine meats. Plus, no one makes sausage like Joseph's. They have 32 rotating flavors like Mexican chorizo, teriyaki pineapple, or spinach and feta. So there's something for everyone. You know, an apron is just a cape worn backwards. So be a superhero at your next cookout with fresh meat and sausage from Joseph's Market on Front Street in Waterville. Find them at josephsmarketmain.com and like them on Facebook. For us, it's a family business that is steeped in tradition. You know, our relationship with Waterville goes back a long ways. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to grow, and we've been able to grow with the town. We look at the work that we do as something bigger than just the sale of a car or the servicing of an automobile. We're here to be a part of something bigger than just ourselves by giving back to the community with our time and our energy, because it's all about taking care of people. Mike Violet, A.J. Knight, our videographer, Galen Neal, back here live at Fuller Field in Augusta as Ben Lucas's jersey gets retired tonight. The Fitzpatrick Award-winning quarterback in 2013. His number 13 will never be worn by anyone else. What a great quarterback he was under the tutelage under B.L. Lippert. Let's run down the scores Around the state here at halftime, sponsored by Hammond Lumber Company in no particular order. Bangor and Noble in a 7-7 tie at the half. Bedford, New Hampshire is playing Thornton Academy tonight in a crossover game. It's not going well for the Trojans. It's Bedford 28 and Thornton Academy nothing. Thornton Academy, of course, coming off that loss last week to Levitt where they gave up 29 unanswered points to Noah Carpenter and company in the second half. So not a good night for Thornton Academy. Belfast over MCI at the half, 12-7. Bonnie Eagle beating EL at halftime, 21-8. It is Cape Elizabeth 6, Freeport 3. Falmouth and Skowhegan don't have a score on that as of yet. Hamden Academy shutting out Madison, 21 to nothing. Herman over Nokomis at the half, 6 to nothing. It is Kennebunk 41, Marshwood 34. That's a wing dinger in the fourth quarter. Lawrence all over Brewer at the half, 27 to nothing. Levitt doing it again, this time to Chevrolet, 28 to nothing in the second quarter. It doesn't matter what class of team they play. Massabesic over Gorham, 21 to nothing. Mesolonsky shutting out Mount Blue in the first half, 13 to nothing. Oak Hill 14, Lisbon 8 at the half. It's Oxford Hills over Sanford by a score of 12 to nothing. South Portland and Scarborough, nil-nil at halftime. Also, Wells and Freiburg, no score in the first half. Westbrook over Deering, 22 to 12. It's Wyndham over Lewiston by a score of 19 to nothing. And at the half, Win Winthrop, Monmouth, Halldale, shutting out Old Town by a score of 42 to nothing. Eight-man large and small playing prelim games tonight. Let's see if I can find any scores. Waterville's playing Mountain Valley. There's no score in on that as of yet. Eight men north in the quarters. It's Bucksport 46, Ellsworth nothing. Also an eight-man small in the north. Stearns 40, Madinaw Cook 6. 
It's Holton 12, Dexter 8, Old Orchard Beach 48 to nothing over Mount View at the half. Old Orchard Beach is a terrific eight-man team. Eight-man small in the south, Dirigo 33, Trape nothing. And finally, no score in on the eight-man small south quarterfinal matchup between number four, Sockabee Valley, and number five, Booth Bay. So that's the scores at halftime and more around the state tonight, of course, Tomorrow, we've got football from Winslow as the Foxcroft Academy Ponies bring their high-flying offense into Winslow to take on the Black Raiders. And if I remember correctly, A.J., I was looking at Foxcroft Academy statistics, and I believe they've scored something like 312 points and given up 12. Yeah, they've scored, I think, they've scored, I think, at least 40 in all but one game. And the crazy thing about the 12 is I was getting ready for the game tomorrow is the last game against Freeport, they've given up six twice. The last game against Freeport was one of the games they gave up six. That was actually the first offensive touchdown they've given up this year. So Winslow's going to have their hands full tomorrow. Will the weather be some sort of an equalizer? Well, perhaps so, but we will find out. So Winslow and Foxcroft Academy, 1 o'clock tomorrow on the score. Pre-game show at 12.50, live video and audio. At the usual places, centralmainsports.com, 1160thescore.com, and now on our YouTube channel. Go to YouTube, subscribe, Central Main Sports on YouTube, Central Main Sports on YouTube. And also, tonight we had features in the pregame show, a look back at the history of the Coney Gardner matchup, interviews with the coaches. Those will be posted on our YouTube page and also our social media pages later on as well. Score here at the half from Fuller Field in Augusta. The Coney Rams 21, Gardner Tigers 7. Second half action is next on The Score. Looking to begin or further your career in manufacturing and don't know where to start? Miss State Machine is in need of CNC machinists at our Winslow facility where we manufacture components for some of the most exciting industries, aerospace, defense, power generation. I'm Jeremy Stanford, manufacturing manager, and I personally want to invite you to come learn about the great pay and benefits Midstate Machine has to offer. To apply, visit MidstateUSA.com. That's MidstateUSA.com, an equal opportunity employer. Come grow with us. Oh, please start. You wouldn't allow your car to bypass its maintenance, would you? Hey, Jen, would you look this up on your computer? Oh, wish I could. This office computer is so slow. How about your computer maintenance? Trust the pros at Computer Improvements. They can come on site or stop by. Handling general maintenance, antivirus protection, hardware upgrades, and Computer Improvements can set you up with solid-state hardware memory, giving your operating system wicked fast response time due to less moving parts. So your day isn't like this. Oh. Contact Computer Improvements to schedule your service today. Computer Improvements, downtown Skowhegan. Are you fed up with high prices at the pump? Do monthly utility bills drain your wallet? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather-tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. Don't miss out. Call Renewal by Anderson today. Notice the price of gas and oil lately? Thinking about a pellet stove? Pellets are a renewable resource that are economical, and pellet stoves don't have to be ugly or loud. Come talk to us at Somerset Stone and Stove. Let us explain why now is the best time to have your pellet stove installed. Wouldn't you love to have a gas stove or fireplace designed for your home? Let Somerset Stone and Stove design and install a Regency gas stove or fireplace that is just right for you. Let us customize your Regency gas stove or fireplace while you enjoy the beauty and warmth. Visit Somerset Stone and Stove in Oakland. I came for a visit and I just fell in love with it. They just want to see you be you and like just excel. There's a lot of opportunities here. It really gives me time to figure out what I want to do with my life. It's a good stepping stone to get to where you want to be. The tuition is definitely part of what brought me here. You know, credits transfer, that's huge, especially for a community college when you're trying to figure out what you want. CM's the best place. Honestly, it's the best place. you got to be here to experience it. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. 
Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Randy Belanger purchased the Harry J. Smith Company over seven years ago, knowing his customers expected the same quality service as they have always received for over 100 years. With 10 bays and 12 employees, we can have most of your repairs done the same day. Whether it's on your car, truck, or RV, we can handle it. Just call us and let us go to work for you. The Harry J. Smith Company, 13 Sanger Avenue in Waterville, keeping your vehicle on the road for over 100 years and doing it the right way. At P.J. Diggs, they know septic systems. Maybe your existing system is failing or it's a new house lot. You need new installation. Call P.J. Diggs. They can bring their site evaluator to design the right septic system. Headed to camp? Ditch the outhouse for a newly installed system. How about a septic system for your campsite? Imagine your own private campground. Already have a septic design? P.J. Diggs can install it for you. Call 431-4299. That's 431-4299. At P.J. Diggs, they know septic systems. One. 31 Hinkley Road, Cayman. Dixon's Country Market on the Neck Road, Benton has it all. Sunoco gas and 24-hour diesel, plus a jam-packed store with what you need to grab and go. And so much succulent food. Huge sandwiches, delicious wraps, and hand-tossed fresh dough-loaded pizza. They have drinks, snacks, fresh meat and cheese in their deli counter, plus local Lively's products that won't cost you a lot of money. And remember those whoopie pies. Delightful, delicious Dixon's Country Market in Benton, supporting local high school school sports. Mike Filan, AJ Knight, along with our videographer Galen Neal, welcoming you back to Fuller Field in Augusta. Tonight's game is brought to you by Central Maine Motors Auto Group in Waterville, the dealer with no dock fees, where cars and trucks always cost you less. Find them online, cmautogroup.com. 21-7. The Coney Rams over the Gardner Tigers. Tigers getting a touchdown with no time left on the clock on a a little flip pass out to Braden Elliott, who did all the work basically himself to score. So Gardner scores at the end of the half, and now they will get the football to start the second half. So let's see if they can do it. And it being score on the last possession of the first half and then get the second half kickoff and score there. Let me ask you this, Mike. Does Burgess make an appearance again now that you got to sit him, you got to go to halftime, or... After Nagy throws that touchdown pass, do you stick with the, I guess, quote-unquote hot hand? I, I would stick with the hot hand. Um, I don't know if they have moved Burgess around from quarterback maybe to running back this year, but that may be an option because he's a fine runner. But the problem is he can't hang on to the ball. Yeah. That would be there. I mean, because 105 yards on 10 carries for him, two fumbles lost. So, like you said, if you can get him in the running game, that'd be great. All right. Foster ready to kick it off. From left to right from the 40-yard line. A little bit of a headwind. Three receivers deep for the Gardner Tigers. 21-7 Coney. Here's Foster foot in the ball. Drives it down the right side. It's taken on a hop on the return. Working to the right, Cody Dingwell. And the Coney Rams cover it really well. Excellent special teams play. And the tackle made by Anderson Noyes on special teams. So it is first and ten for the Gardner Tigers. And the line of scrimmage is their own 23. That's a different quarterback, isn't it? 27, right? <laughs> Which I don't have on the roster if it's a 27. On first and ten, three receivers to the right. Man goes in motion, and that play just didn't look good from the start. Yeah, that looks like 27 to me. Who's number 27? Oh, he he's not number eight? They changed jersey? Oh, okay. That's Asher Nagy. His jersey ripped in the first half. Thank you, sir. Got it. Appreciate it. It's always good to have the Gardner coaching staff right with you. So, it is first and 15 after the penalty. Asher Nagy at quarterback. A number change. Nagy to the right, then up the middle, then swallowed whole. 
The Coney defense all over it. Up to make the stop for the Rams, Caden Veyu. Interesting to see because obviously I don't think you're going to call necessarily a different offense, but Nagy not the runner that Burgess is. So second and 15 and a whole lot of confusion. That lineman went, took a knee there, and I think he was trying to, to play. Now, Nagy, if he's 27, he's coming off. So he is leaving. Yeah, Nagy went off. Oh, this is all sorts of confusing. All right, so now let's see. Are they bringing Burgess back in? They are. So a Chase Burgess reprieve here with the injury to Nagy. And it is second and 15. He's going to throw it, flips it out to the right side. And Coney snuffed it out pretty easily. On the reception there was Owen Chadwick. And very little, if any, gain. Curious to see if that was anything. So it is third and 15. Burgess over to the sideline, gets the play. Ten forty left in the third quarter, 21-7. Coney in the lead. Chase Burgess in the shotgun, third and 15. Going to run it all the way, runs to the right, and... Knocks down the official over there and is out of bounds after a short gain. And it'll be a punt situation here for Gardner deep in their own territory. And Parker's surgeon already with two long touchdown receptions and a long punt return of 41 yards unofficially is going to have a great opportunity here. He is standing at the 46 of Gardner awaiting the punt. Late Gardner player on the field to give him 11. Always good to play with that number. Snap is on the money. Kick is a shorty. And your best to get away from this one. It bounces. And it takes a Gardner bounce. And it rolls all the way to the sideline right in front of B.L. Lippert to the 40. 43-yard line is where they put it down. So Coney is in business. First and 10. At the Gardner 43 with a 21-7 lead. Yeah, it feels like almost anything that could have gone wrong went wrong for Gardner because you get the false starts and outs first and 15, then you made the, your backup QB who you brought in goes out, and then you no gain, no gain, no gain, and you punt now. Coney's on their own uh, on the Gardner 43. Yeah, actually it's the 44. First and 10, 44 for Parker Morin. Morin has two receivers to the left, one of them to the right. Running backs to either side. Handoff to Anderson St. Ange. He spins and reaches the 41. Upended over there on the far side by Chadwick. We'll spot him back down at the 42. So a gain of two. Second down and eight. Surgeant wide left. Keep an eye on him. Right there in his face, basically, is Dingwell. Now he backs off a little bit. I wouldn't cover him that close. Me either. All right, the snap, the handoff to St. Ange. St. Ange inside. St. Ange and a flag down just as he went down. Tackled by Owen Chadwick. I think they're going to get a face mask, I believe, at the end of this. So St. Ange with a good gainer. And they're going to add on. And it is a 15-yarder. A personal foul face mask. Ouch. So Coney gets a face mask penalty after a decent run by Anderson St. Ange. First and 10 Rams at the 21-yard line of Gardner. Surgeon is wide to the left. Morin in the gun. 
He's got Flynn on one side, St. Ange in the other, on the other. Morin's going to throw it. Back to throw. Left side, surge it, end zone, knocked away. Good coverage there. All the way by Cody Dingwell. Yeah. Of course, it helps when you have the end zone behind you, and Parker Surgeon can only run so far, but still good coverage. Yeah, that was more knew exactly where we wanted to go. Got a one-on-one matchup, but like you said, great coverage there. High point the ball and knock it down. So it is second and 10 now for Coney up to 21, second and 10. Morin over to have a word with B.L. Lippert. Surgeon again, wide left. Parker's got two bomb touchdowns tonight. 64 and 74 yards. Morin, back to throw. Flush, rolls right. Looking, 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 and throws it away. Smart play by the sophomore quarterback. Don't take a sack. Chuck it out of bounds, and he did. Hey, you think you could see him? One of the things I know uh, Coach Lipper talked to you, Mike, was that there, you know, there was some... Play early on in the season, a true sophomore making his first starts look like a true sophomore. And I think you pointed out a couple times tonight, you could see the improvement just from making those those plays where they're not they're not you know uh, big plays. They're making the smart play, throw it away, get rid of it here, put it in the dirt. Parker wide left, Jackson Veyu out there as a slot. Two receivers to the right now coming in motion across the formation is Demons. And Morin back to throw, way back to throw. End zone, it's picked off! It is picked off in the end zone! And on the return for the Gardner Tigers, Evan Mishu. Morin threw it up for grabs. And the pick by Evan Mishu, a big play by the Gardner defense. Second time tonight that defense is bowed up and kept Coney out of the end zone. They stopped the Rams on a fourth and goal, and now deep in the Gardner territory up to 21, an interception in the end zone by Evan Mishu. First and 10. Looks like Nagy's back in there at quarterback. Play developed slowly. A handoff, then a handoff to Dingwell. Dingwell right side. Dingwell with room. Dingwell from the complete other side of the formation, ran a heck of a long way to get six or seven yards or five yards. I think Ding, somebody for Gardner is slow to get up. The original handoff to Evan Mishu. And now Dingwell a little slow to get up. Yeah, I can't see him. Coney is in the way, but I think you're right. I think it is Dingwell. Eight twenty line, eight twenty nine. That is left in the third. Twenty one to seven, Coney. And Gardner has their personnel sorted out. Second down and ten. Excuse me, second down and three. From the twenty nine. Flip out to the left side. Ball is caught out there. And a first down catch on the left side by Zach Christian. That was a heck of a catch by Christian to go up and get that. Bayou on the tackle for Coney, so a first and 10 for Gardner. From their own 44. Asher Nagy. Hands it off to Duty. Duty, the fullback, is hit and wrapped up. He got thunderously tackled there. Flynn came in and finished it off. Now, that was but hitting him initially there was Caden Veyu. That was a heck of a wrap up there. Obviously, Duty is a, a stout individual. So, second and 11. For the Gardner Tigers. Nagy brings him out. Wide to the left side for Gardner is Elliott. He's got their touchdown. The slot is Davidson. Nagy. Going to throw it. Flips it downfield. And it's caught at the 20-10 to the 
five yard line. A big gainer for the Gardner Tigers. All the way to the six. That was a nice play there by Nagy because he laid it up there. That's uh, one of those situations where he really just kind of threw his receiver open. I'm trying to see who caught it. Uh, 80. Was it 80? Well, of course, I don't have an 80. No, it's 88. That was Kristen again. Yep, 88. You're correct. So, Zach Kristen, two catches on this drive. That one huge. And it's first and goal at the six. First and goal at the six. Nagy with a full house in the backfield. One running back on each side. On first and goal at the six. Hand off to Mishu, and Mishu stuffed. The inside, to go. That inside of the Coney run defense has been solid tonight. So it'll be second down and goal at the six. Gardner trying to tighten this game up. It's 21 to 7. Tigers with a second and goal from the Coney six yard line. They trailed at one time 21 to nothing. All right, Nagy brings him out. Two backs in the backfield. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Second and goal from the six. Fake handoff to Duty in the flat. The ball is incomplete. Lobbed out there. And incomplete. I believe Kristen again. Zach Kristen again, the intended receiver. And that's a dangerous one there, too. Kristen gets a paw on it, which keeps it, uh, I think, which is what knocks it down. But there they kind of run that flat uh, curl combo, and the defender for Coney came off that curl. If that hangs up there, he's running while having an attempt to grab that. So third and goal from the six. Ball on the right hash. For Asher Nagy, two receivers to the left, two to the right. Third and goal from the six. Nagy calling signals. And claps a couple of times. No ball came out, and then a flag came out. Yeah, Elliot Lee fell forward on that clap. Fifth, so, five-yard penalty. Yeah, fifth penalty, 35 yards for the Tigers. Two for ten for Coney thus far. So, pretty good discipline for the most part tonight on the penalty front. That one painful, though. It goes to third and 11. Third and goal at the 11. Asher Nagy's been in at quarterback since the second quarter after Chase Burgess fumbled twice. Nagy has engineered one touchdown. Trying to do a second one here. Third and goal from the 11, two and two. A fake to duty. Throw over the middle. It's knocked down. Aggressive defense there from Coney, but a nice job, I think, playing aggressive enough, but not in a way that's going to draw a flag. He's able to kind of squeak around the offensive player there to knock it down. Jackson Veyu knocked that pass down. So fourth and goal at the 11. Big spot in this game. Gardner can make it a one-score game. 21 to 7, fourth and goal at the 11. Elliott is wide left. The slot man is Davidson wide left. Two receivers to the right. Duty the running back. Nagy to throw it. Flips it. End zone. It's caught. Touchdown. Brady Davidson on fourth and goal from the 11. The Tigers have scored a second touchdown. It's 21 to 13. And how about. Uh, Nagy coming in and inspiring some life here. Now five for nine uh, for, what, about, uh, I think about 100, 140 yards. So Nagy, after throwing a touchdown pass, will attempt the conversion. Snap is good. Ball is down. Kick is up and good. 6.08 to go in the third quarter. We've got a ball game. The score, Coney 21, Gardner 14. Yeah, it felt like after the first Gardner drive, the, the energy in the building like really came down. And credit the Tigers for responding there. Coney needs to find some mojo. It seems like since that weird last possession they had in the second quarter, kind of just uh, just not playing the same, I think, crisp crispness. No, something happened there. 
at the end of the half, they just kind of funked out. They have the ball with a minute and a half left and three timeouts at, what, the 49-yard line, and it just fizzled out. And since that time, Gardner has taken control of this game. Yeah, so Nagy will kick off yet again. That last drive gets extended with a 15-yard face mask on Gardner, and then you throw the interception in the end zone. So Nagy to kick it off, 21-14. to 14. And it is fielded at the 18-yard line. Working up the left side for Coney is Ethan Demons. He reverses, goes up the middle, and ends up with a nice return. 21 yards on the return. A lot of work there. Well done by Ethan Demons. That's and good field physic. Good field position for Coney, first and 10 at the 40. Now, Demons, a lot of start and stop, but, I mean, it was starts and stops in the right spots to get him to the 40. Morin's got to find Surgeon again. I, I think also St. Ange uh, had a really nice first drive, and then they kind of went away from him. First and 10, Coney at the 40. Parker Morin has thrown two touchdown passes tonight, both to... Parker Surgeon, handoff St. Orange, he's got room here, midfield, 45, down the sidelines, out of bounds. Anderson St. Orange at the 41-yard line, give him 19. He's got speed. I said, I think Coney, he was really well established their first couple of drives. Obviously that first one, they, they failed to get in on the uh, fourth down, but then after that fumble, they just kind of seemed to go away from him and try to unload the pass the game. Got to keep him active. First and 10 from the 41. Morin out of the shotgun. Another handoff, St. Ange. Big hole. It closes, but he still gets a big gainer down to the 37 yard line before he finally got popped there by Evan Ahern. How about St. Ange, too? He is not the, the, the thickest of running backs, but he does not avoid contact. He will lower that shoulder. Boy, he rammed him for sure. And give him eight more. Yep, second and two. Second down and two for the Coney Rams at the 33 of Gardner. Morin calling signals. Sends Surgeon in motion to the left. A play fake. No, they give it to St. Ange, then a fake out. In the flat to Surgeon and St. Ange, not much there. Maybe a yard. And it'll be third down and about one duty in on the stop for Gardner. I can tell you, I like that play design. Gardner didn't really run with Surgeon, and then there was only one Tiger out there. I like my odds of Surgeon one-on-one -on -one in opens field. Well, he's out there on the far left now being covered by Evan Whalen. Third down and two. Surgeon, and we have a timeout called by Coney. Coney. I think they were confused there as Morin was calling for the ball, so a timeout called by B.L. Lippert with 4.39 to go in the third quarter. Let's reset things for you. Brought to you by Midstate Machine. If you're looking for a career, check out the Machinist Development Program. Do it right now, MidstateUSA.com. 4.39 to go in the third quarter. Coney, 21. Gardner 14, Rams jumped out to a 21 to nothing lead in the first half. Gardner with a late touchdown. Braden Elliott with a fine run after the catch for 15 yards. Cut it to 21 to 7. Tigers here in the second half took the ball right down the field. And Davidson hauled in an 11 yard touchdown pass. Terrific catch by Brady Davidson and a nice throw by Asher Nagy. And it's 21 to 14. And our game reset is brought to you by. Mid-State Machine. Tomorrow, we'll be in Winslow. Black Raiders taking on Foxcroft Academy. Game time, 1 o'clock. Rain or shine, will be there. Yeah, it's going to rain. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, no shine tomorrow. Trips left for Parker Morin. Third and two. St. Ange the back. Third and two. St. Ange gets the give. And St. Ange just able to get that first down on the stop there. Braden Elliott. But Anderson St. Ange, sophomore running back, a good find for the Coney Rams, and we've got a man down for the Gardner Tigers, and a timeout called on the field with 4.33 to go in the third. So a timeout. As the Gardner coaches and 
training staff come out to take a look. 4.33 to go in the third. We'll take a timeout, too, with this injury on the field. The score, Coney 21 and Gardner 14. We'll back after this on the score. Whittemore & Sons, your Coyote tractor dealer. Dependable sales and service for over 50 years. We are located on the Waterville Road in Skowhegan. Sales and service by a family who cares. Over 30 years ago, Paul and Jonna Bowen set out on a mission to help aging Mainers stay in their own homes. Assistance Plus grew from their passion, dedication, and integrity, where clients come first. Today, Assistance Plus serves not only the elderly, but clients with developmental and behavioral health challenges. Assistance Plus, here for you today and through all points of your life. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Over 40 academic degrees and programs are recognized as some of the best in the United States. Nursing, criminal justice, forensic, psychology, IT, education, culinary arts, and so much more. Offering one of the lowest tuition rates in New England. Plus, a top-seeded national champion producing athletics department. Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Find your passion. Go to cmcc.edu. Mike Violet, A.J. Knights, back here at Fuller Field in Augusta. An injury timeout. A Gardner Tiger player has been down now for a few minutes. 4.33 left in the third. Don't have any idea who that Tiger is. Now the refs huddled up, and the, by the time that cleared up, just haven't had a chance to see him, hopefully. Yeah, unable to, as you can see, get much of a shot there. So we will wait and see. This game now is anyone's game. It's a one-score game, and the Gardner Tigers have just ground it out. It has not been pretty. They have turned the ball over three times tonight, and yet they're still in the game. Yeah, Coney, I think, is going to imagine at halftime uh, kicking themselves a little bit because, like you said, they, they got uh, stopped on fourth and goal from the one in the opening drive, then that last drive, their last possession in the second half, they're at the 49, three timeouts, and it's just a weird drive. They burn 30 seconds and don't convert. And then they come out and throw an interception after stopping Gardner on three and out, and Gardner goes down, scores that touchdown, cuts it to seven. So the 145th Coney Gardner game. Stop now with 4.33 to go in the third quarter. Because of a Gardner player being injured. How about Coach Munzing making the QB switch, Mike? Yeah, he didn't, uh, he didn't waste any time with it going from Chase Burgess to... Asher Nagy, and I think Coach Munching just had enough with the fumbles. The carelessness with the football, you just can't have it. And he yanked him. Yeah, Burgess has been in, I think, for two plays as uh, Nagy uh, carried on the first actual play of the game in the second half, went out for two. Uh, but Burgess not back in, and it, it makes me curious, Mike, obviously these two teams playing for home field advantage in this matchup next week in the playoffs, if... You stick with Nagy and you and you spend a week of practice putting Burgess at running back because he's obviously an effective runner. But to your point, doesn't matter how great you are, you can run all over the place if you can't keep a hold of the ball. It's not going to matter much. Yeah, I mean that's the whole point. Um, you know, if, if, if Burgess is going to be in the game, he, he's got to take care of the ball, and you'd rather have him be a quarterback because that's his position. But the carelessness with the football, you just can't tolerate it. And you give them one. That's going to happen from time to time. You're going to fumble. But then another one right after that. And Patrick Munzing just decided that was it. Asher Nagy in the game. Nagy's engineered two touchdown drives. And Gardner's in this thing. Yeah, and that's not uh, without its issue. I mean, that's two Coney's. I think had two opportunities that really Burgess threw one right into defender's numbers who didn't hang on to it. Could have been an interception. There was a tip ball that was had a, a legit shot too. So the ball was in harm's way a lot. Uh, but credit Gardner, they had two really big stands. Obviously, that first fourth and goal from the one, they stopped Coney. 
And then uh, after they go three and out to open up the third quarter, Coney finds himself driving, and from uh, what Morin stated about his 2025, throws it right into the arms of a uh, defender, and Gardner uses that momentum to go down and cut it to seven. And this is, what, our third Coney game this year? And we have not seen Parker Morris be, Parker Morin, that is, uh, make a careless throw like that all year in the three, maybe more games that we've seen them. He's been very efficient with the ball, and as we've seen tonight, I mean, he's thrown two perfect passes to Parker Surgeon for touchdowns. But that was an ill-advised, very bad throw. Nobody there in red. And it was picked off and ended a drive. So, unfortunately, here we have what appears to be a serious injury. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, that's... they. The player was on there uh, kind of on all fours, and they quickly moved him to his back, and he's been there for a minute. TGA Mains, the Coney Athletic Director, out quickly for a word. Um, a quick word with the referee about, I would assume, maybe getting an ambulance on the field. And I think that's what is going to happen. T.J. Maines talking to an EMT right now. And it's... And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. They're moving the gates down. and Yeah, I think you're right. I'm wondering why they didn't get an EMT out there sooner. Yeah, but I think you're right because those gates that were led the walkway in. They're spreading out, so I think you're totally right. So an ambulance will soon make its way on the field. And this Gardner player being attended to by several people down there. Well, that just the uh, trainer there just took off look like shoulder pads and helmet. Yeah. This is very unsettling for sure to have a player down this long. There's a stretcher. Yeah. Okay, so they brought stretcher out, no ambulance, but a stretcher coming out. And I believe parents coming out on the field as well, which is extremely unsettling for them. No idea who the player is, and obviously no idea what the nature of this injury is, but it is... Clearly a serious, severe situation. Just hope it's more obviously the situation's precaution than anything else. That's what you always hope for, AJ, that they obviously are going to take the utmost caution no matter what the injury is. B.L. Lippert, the Coney coach, had been out there. And it's been a while since I've seen a situation like this regarding an injury in high school football. Yeah, I mean we've had we've had injuries this year across all the sports. Collarbones has been yes, um, several. The and young lady from Erskine Academy, whose name escapes me, who did color with me for half <laughs> of a game, broken collarbone, and of course, um, young Mister Pomelo, the quarterback of Winslow, broke his collarbone in a preseason game. I can't remember his first name. 
a Tucker, isn't it? Tucker, yes, thank you. Good good out. Um, yeah, but even the, the Erskine Academy player, well, it's escaping my name, and she did fill in that next week we were down there. Uh, she the, the play seemed completely innocent. She just tripped. They got to, she got tangled up with a player. She went down, and the only reason we found out is because they, they had a trainer discussion right near us. And, of course, next week she was in a sling, but she uh, – what did, didn't she say soccer kind of her second sport? Cause yeah, she's, she's a, a high, high jumper? I thought it was high jumper. Yes. So they have cut the shoulder pads off of this Gardner player. And obviously when that happens, there is a sense of urgency. I think they took the face mask off the helmet as well. So the challenge now for them is to get the player on the board, I presume. That's why we've seen several of these trainers, EMTs, get really low to try to get the board underneath this Gardner player to secure him, stabilize him so as not to move. I think they finally did. And I think they have him on the, they do. He is on the board. Now he'll be placed very cautiously on the stretcher. After that gets secured. And they will get this Gardner player off the field quickly as quickly as they can and bring him to the emergency room, which is not all that far from here at Maine General, several miles. So let's take a break here. 4.33 to go in the third quarter during this lengthy injury timeout. The score, Coney 21, Gardner 14. We'll be back after this on The Score. 201 Tire Battery and Service and the Goodyear Credit Card for all your auto needs with great benefits. Six-month financing when you buy $250 or more. Subject to credit approval, terms and conditions apply. Double savings on select Goodyear tires via mail-in rebate. Accepted at Exxon and mobile locations nationwide. The Goodyear Credit Card, the complete solution. 201 Tire Battery and Service on the Augusta Basilboro Line. Get yours. Apply now. Nothing brings people together like good food. So when you're cooking for the ones you love, why trust anyone but Joseph's Market? Joseph's Market is famous for their fine meats. Plus, no one makes sausage like Joseph's. They have 32 rotating flavors like Mexican chorizo, teriyaki pineapple, or spinach and feta. So there's something for everyone. You know, an apron is just a cape worn backwards. So be a superhero at your next cookout with fresh meat and sausage from Joseph's Market on Front Street in Waterville. Find them at josephsmarketmain.com and like them on Facebook. Book. Mike Violet, AJ Knight back here at Fuller Field in Augusta. The injured player, Trevor Barron, and the precaution taken because he was slammed down pretty hard, hit his head. So, concussion protocol certainly being followed. So, that is the update that we have. Trevor Barron, a freshman lineman for Gardner, wearing number 65. A precaution for what sounds like a concussion. So, of all of the scenarios that you could think of here, um, a concussion, while extremely serious, is a better option than what I thought it might be, some sort of neck injury or something like that. So, yeah, And like you said, too, even hearing from the Gardner coaching staff, more precaution than concern from their part. So if we get an update on Trevor Barron, we'll certainly pass it along. Meanwhile, the officials and the players. Gather here, just kind of refocus. Obviously a big, long break. Yeah, and a tough thing to crank it back up again after the break. It's going to be first and ten for the Coney Rams at the 29-yard line of Gardner after about a 15- or 20-minute delay. 
And so we have football yet again. Three receivers to the left for Parker Morin. Parker Surgeon is out there wide left. First and 10 from the 29. Morin in the shotgun. Slides to the left, looks, flips downfield. Man is wide open. Touchdown, Cody! Killian Arnold, a 29-yard touchdown catch. He could not have been more open. And it's 27 to 14, Coney. Finally, one of those motions where I think Surgeon takes all the attention and someone runs the underneath underneath coverage. And uh, Killian Arnold takes complete advantage of that. Landon Foster, Legatron. Blasts it up, and it is good. And with 4.19 to go in the third quarter after that long injury timeout, bang, Coney scores on the first play afterwards. It's 28-14. to Yeah, that's the case again as you get to see the replay there. Sergeant runs through and just takes all the coverage with him, and then Killian, Arlen gets, Killian Arnold excuse me, gets lost underneath. So Coney goes 60 yards for the touchdown, and they've got a two-score lead again. Big response from them is it felt like they'd kind of lost some offensive juice after that, yeah, that, that drive stalled in the second. Yeah, their mojo was gone after that, but back there. That was also the first completion for Morin in uh, five attempts. Interesting. Four attempts here in the second half. All right, here's the kick. 4.19 to go in the third. Foster. High kick, short though. Taken at the 16 to the 20, 25-yard line. Braden Elliott on the return. And Elliott close to the 30. And the Tigers will try to rev it up again. Down by two scores. It'll be first and ten at their own 30. Credit to uh, Gardner. You get the kind of complete change in offenses. Obviously, you lose Burgess, right? You lose that running ability. But uh, Nagy comes in, and he's uh, done a nice job stabilizing the passing game. First and ten for Asher Nagy and company. Braden Elliott, who's... Got one touchdown tonight, wide to the left after a fine run after the catch. Nagy a fake, throws it out, left side, nobody home. Too high for Zach Kristen, who's had a good game tonight catching the ball. That one kind of felt like he threw it to a spot as opposed to a player. Second and 10 here for the Tigers, looking to uh, cut into this two-touchdown deficit. 4.09 to go in the third. Second down and 10. Wide to the left side is Davidson. He's also got a touchdown catch tonight. Nagy in the gun. Backs to either side. Handoff inside to Chadwick. Look at him run. Chadwick has a first down. He's over the 45-yard line and all the way up to about the 49-yard line. If that's the case, it's a 19-yard run. There's a nice quick hitter there, Chadwick, quickly into the second level. Yep, 49, so give him 19. Yep. First and 10 from the 49-yard line. A running clock, 3.50 to go in the third. Nagy, handoff. Up the gut. Making the tackle there, Josh Kidd. That was duty on the carry. And Kidd gets over midfield into Coney Real Estate at the 48-yard line. Give him three. Worth noting this Coney defense, even though they've started to kind of refound their groove with the, the win streak they're on, has not necessarily been a uh, – they haven't been a shutout defense. They've given up, I think, about 20 points a game. And we have an official's timeout now, a Gardner shoe issue. I mean, one of the longest third quarters ever. Yeah, this has taken a while. 
one of the offensive linemen for Gardner. Reties the shoe. We're all set to go. Second down and eight from the 48-yard line of Coney. Nagy calls for the ball. Hand off to Duty. Duty tries to turn. Spin. No. Nothing there. Jeff Bickford in on the stop for the Coney Rams. About a yard of a gain. And it'll be third down and about seven. That was a nice job there by the Coney defense because it looked like Duty was going to spin away there and be able to at least get up to about the 45, make it third and a little bit more manageable. But good grip there to hang on and, and keep him from going anywhere. So third and seven for Gardner at the 48-yard line of Coney. All right, twins left, twins right. All spread out. Coney will rush three. Trying to get Asher Nagy and flags down all over the place. And Flynn was blitzing. He was in the backfield in no time. But this will be a procedure call on the offense. Yeah, the slot receiver there took off early. Fourth penalty in this uh, second half, in this third quarter for Gardner for uh, 30 yards. So it moves to third and 12. Third down and 12. Asher Nagy. In relief of Chase Burgess, has engineered two touchdowns. Man in motion is Mishu. Back to throw Nagy. Has plenty of time. Flips it over the middle. Throws it up for grabs and it's picked off at the 45. To midfield. And the Coney Rams have turned over Gardner again. That is the fourth Tiger turnover tonight. And the Rams are in business around the 41-yard line of Gardner. And I believe that was Flynn who picked it off. I think it was Morin. Was it? Okay. Parker Morin. The man can play defense, too. Yeah, that's two. That's Morin. So Parker Morin, give him the pick. So he's thrown one, and he's caught one. I think he'd be willing to cancel those out if he had his, <laughs> his, his, his choices. But You think? Feels better, I think, after throwing one to go grab one coming from that safety position. With sure Saint does. Play That's got to feel good for Parker Morin to be on the other end of it and cause a turnover. First and 10, 41-yard line. Morin in the gun. The handoff outside at St. Don's. It's a race 20, 10, 5. And he is out of bounds at the one-yard line. Anderson St. Ange couldn't get it there. He got it all the way down to the one. He needed 41. He got 40. It is first and goal, Coney. St. Ange starting to cook here after Coney had him going early in the first quarter and then kind of went away from him, and he has been big to them establishing some momentum. you got to give him the ball again, don't you? Yes. Let him score the touchdown. Let's see if they do that. Let's see if Coach Lippert gives him the ball. St. Ange right to the left of Parker Morin. First and goal at the one. He gets it. He got hit and a flag down thrown by one of the officials and another flag down late. So hold on. Let's have a meeting. I'm going to guess the first one's got to be on Coney, some holding or something like that, but... With you saying how late the second one came, I wonder if somebody said a no-no. Yeah, word. the line judge on the sidelines walking toward the middle of the field, he threw that late one. Coney backed up their huddle, so I think they feel like at least one of them's on them. But correct me, so if, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, That if it unfolds that way, holding it would take effect, and then the personal foul would be after the play. All right, it is holding on the offense. And a personal foul on the offense. Ooh. So two naughties there for Coney. And that's a problem because the personal foul came after the play, so you do get both those penalties, I think, as they march back. So first and goal from the one is going to turn into first and goal from, I don't know, Norwich Walk. I've never – <laughs> That's a great local reference, AJ. I like that. Happy to help. I like that. Of course, you could have said Sydney or Belgrade, but you went Norwich Walk. That's cool. So it is 
First and what? I think it's first and goal from the 27. Okay. First and goal from the 27. More and blitzed. Right side ball is caught. St. Ons turns downfield, puts his head down, and powers inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, tackled by Elijah Farias. That's a well-designed play by Coney. And St. Ange able to get it down to the 15. So he got 12. So it's second and goal from there. We're under a minute to go in the half. Excuse me, in the third quarter. 48 seconds. Second and goal from the 15. Sergeant wide left. Slot man out there for the Coney Rams, Ethan Demons. Inside of him, Killian Arnold. Hand off St. Ange. Anderson St. Ange to the 10. And it will be third and goal for Coney up the 10-yard line. Clock at 20 seconds. St. Ange, I think he got his pad level a little bit too high there, but I think uh, regardless, Coney, I think, going to take this one after giving up 27 yards on penalty. 26, excuse me. To the fourth quarter we go. Three in the books in the 145th edition of the Coney Gardner Gridiron Battle for the boot. The score after three. Coney 28, Gardner 14. Back after this on Sports Radio 1160 WSKW. The score. For us, it's a family business that is steeped in tradition. You know, our relationship with Waterville goes back a long ways. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to grow and we've been able to grow with the town. We look at the work that we do as something bigger than just the sale of a car or the servicing of an automobile. We're here to be a part of something bigger than just ourselves by giving back to the community with our time and our energy because it's all about taking care of people. Looking to begin or further your career in manufacturing and don't know where to start? Miss State Machine is in need of CNC machinists at our Winslow facility where we manufacture components for some of the most exciting industries, aerospace, defense, power generation. I'm Jeremy Stanford, Manufacturing Manager, and I personally want to invite you to come learn about the great pay and benefits MidState Machine has to offer. To apply, visit MidStateUSA.com. That's MidStateUSA.com, an equal opportunity employer. Come grow with us. Mike Pilot, AJ Knight, back here at Fuller Field in Augusta. Local sports on the score presented by our lead sponsor, Central Maine Community College in Auburn. Find your passion Choose over 40 academic, to choose from, that is, 40 academic degrees and programs. Go to cmcc.edu. That's cmcc.edu. We go to the fourth quarter. It is third and goal for the Coney Rams at the 10-yard line. They lead it 28-14. to 14. They have led by as many as three scores, 21 to nothing. Trying to do it again. Surgent wide left. Fogg trying to come into Fuller Field. Man goes in motion. Back to throw. Morin looking left all the way. Fires it up there. It's up for grabs. Back of the end zone. And it's incomplete. Took a while for it to fall down there. Parker Surgent was double covered. And over there was Cody Dingwell, who might have hurt himself on that somehow. Trying to shake it off. So it's fourth and goal at the 10. I think Dingwell smacked his arm against Surgeons as they went up there. Maybe caught the helmet. Because yeah, Surgeons nearly made a great one-handed catch. And the fog continues to converge. We have rain on the way, of course. That count our blessings for I know. this evening. I, I brought all the gear, tarps, the whole shooting match. Yeah, pop Haven't ups, needed it. Pop-ups in the truck. Yep. <laughs> we got a Jeep if we need to drive it up score, into the stands. Score Jeep is here, and I drove that thing for the first time. That thing could climb a tree. <laughs> I believe it. Plus, you also need a stepladder <laughs> to get into it. That's a big boy vehicle that we got. The score Jeep, you'll see it tomorrow also in Winslow at Pool and Field. Fourth and goal from the 10. Or is it third and goal from the 10? One or the other. More an end zone. Man, open. Caught. Touchdown, Killian Arnold. No. He couldn't hang on. He was right there. Credit that Gardner safety. I thought that safety a little bit slow played it, but instead he waited and I think delivered a very legal hit. Didn't hit him too hard. Oh, wow. Arnold just went 
collapsed to the ground. He got up. Do we have that? Uh, one second. Yeah. AJ will give you a look at the yeah. replay here. He just he went uh, sea legs there. He just got popped. It looked like a clean hit to me live. What does it look like on the replay? Uh, yeah, I'll show it to you again one more time. I thought the safety did a nice job. Could have, I think, been a lot more aggressive, but just kind of stood in place and made contact afterwards. Show it to you here again. Now Arnold is sitting up. I don't think anything aggressive. That was shoulder, you know, shoulder yeah, to chest. Up. He's up. So Arnold is actually running off the field, as you can see. So a happy ending to that. I wonder if that's the case, Mike, where not less so anything else got the wind knocked out of him. Could very well be. Because he took a shoulder to the chest there pretty, pretty firmly. Yeah, and he's running down the sidelines just to work it off, get something to drink. That was a tough ball. It was right there. I believe, though, that was it fourth down. It was fourth down. down, yep. So I was right. So back in the other direction it goes. From fourth and goal at the 10, it goes to first and 10 at the 10 for the Gardner Tigers. They've got work to do. Down 28-14. Credit their defense. They have uh, twice now stopped them at fourth and goal, and they've also gotten a no, it wasn't. That, that was, what? All right, that was third and goal. Now it is fourth and goal. Man, I'm just thoroughly confused, and a field goal attempt here is no good by Logan Foster. Apparently there must have been something with the play on Surgent, but the ball didn't move, right? It stayed on the 10-yard line. That's what's confusing. If there was a penalty... I think Coney just stole a play. I got to be honest. <laughs> I think Coney got a free play. That is just wild. Doesn't affect the score ultimately, and obviously now field position a lot nicer for uh, Gardeners. They move out to the twenty. They have it at the twenty. So never mind everything we said. Yeah, Killian Arnold's fine. Yep. Yeah, everything. Yeah, all, all of that was baloney. First and ten from the twenty for Asher Nagy. Fakes a jet sweep to duty. Nope, it's Burgess in at quarterback, and Burgess kept it after the fake jet sweep. And not much there for Chase Burgess back in at quarterback. Yeah, I can understand trying to, uh, you know, you want to find someone who can provide a big play, but I think the other thing is Burgess comes back in at cornerback. Coney, I think, is going to be looking for him to run. And they're going to go after that ball. That too. Two fumbles tonight for Burgess. Yeah, Yanked he, in the second quarter for Asher Nagy. Now back in there. Yeah, he had 10 carries, 105 yards, two fumbles lost. Has touched the ball, I think, three times uh, here in the second half. Two carries for two yards and an incompletion. Second and nine at the 21. Handoff up the middle. And Gardner not able to find any open space. Kyle Duty on the carry. And the Coney defense smothered that on the tackle. For the Rams, Johnny Lettry. Nice job by duty to get a little more than three out of that. Yeah, not bad. So third and seven. Ten and a half to go in the fourth. It's 28 to 14, Coney. Third and seven. Big spot in this game. Wouldn't want to have to punt from here. No, especially because Surgeon's going to be the one back grabbing it. He's already got a 41-yard punt return that set up a touchdown and, of course, two Bombs for touchdowns. Third and seven. Burgess, nope, this is Nagy, throws it up. It's caught! Wow! Talk about a ball that had a four-leaf clover on it there. Evan Mishu on a ball that had a parachute on it, too. It dropped right into him I don't for know. a first down. I don't know how he saw Mishu. i got to be honest. Because there were so many, there were so many bodies in the way. I have no idea how he saw him there. So it is first and ten at the thirty-one. Asher Nagy 
with the throw and the catch by Mishu. A run here and flags all over the place. As Gardner got it to the 35-yard line, but it would appear that this would come back. See what the call Here's the is. call. Yep, Blocking. Block. Yep. Right. Block below the waist. So that'll cost. That's a biggie, too, isn't it? At 15? Is you it? may be right. You are. Yep. Isn't that 15? Yep. Yeah, because the original line of scrimmage is at the 31. Now the stick standing at the 32. All right, it's back to the 21. But isn't it a spot foul? Is it a spot foul? I don't know. No, it's at the, the it's at the 22, right? So it's just 10. Okay, so 10 is the penalty. So first and 20 from the 22 for Nagy. Hand off to Duty. Duty slants over to the left side. And Gardner just not able to clear any holes on the stop again. Letry. Yeah, that's the, that's one of the things you lose, especially for with Burgess coming out. As Morin checks in for on, uh, Saint Ange at safety, which is interesting, uh, is that Coney's been stout up front in the in the center of the run game. Burgess had success getting outside. So second and nineteen from the twenty-three for Asher Nagy and company. Now a uh -oh. shift. Look at this lineman going out to the left. Patrick Munzing dipping into his bag of tricks. Now a man in motion running left or right side is Weber, and all of that ended up with absolutely nothing as Caden Veyu was right there. So they shift a bunch of linemen out to the left, run an odd offset formation, and a gain of couple of yards, so it is third and long, third and 17. Third and 17, Parker Morin and Parker Surgent playing safety on third and 17 for Nagy. From the shotgun, back to throw, looking, flips it up, and again, it's thrown up for grabs and almost picked off. I want to see here on the replay if I could see if that offensive player slipped. Flynn almost picked it off. Uh, he's. I think there's a little bit of contact, but I think that's probably a good no call. Yeah, Morin almost had a second interception there. So fourth and 17. And Eben Whalen to punt, Parker Surgeon to return. Whalen standing at the 15-yard line. Gardner trying to get the right players on the field. Surgeon right near midfield. He's already had one long punt return. And apparently, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's only 10 men on the field. Maybe close to a delay a game here if they don't hurry. Caden Kendall, the late arrival. And they got it off. The punt is a nice high spiral, and Sergeant can't return it, and everybody gets away, and it takes a nice, healthy Gardner roll. Good punts by Evan Whalen, down to the twenty. One hundred percent. Any punt gives me thirty. Yeah, any punt that stays out of Sergeant's hands already a win. You get a yes. nice roll there to give you your defense at least a chance to to flip a little field position. But here's the thing for Gardner. Are you going to still cover Surgent, which would be my guess, but St. Ange all of a sudden has come on, So, and, and obviously Coney's good with bleeding the clock. Kind of got to pick your poison now. 7.33 remaining. It is 28-14 Coney, first and 10 Rams at their own 30-yard line with a 14-point lead. Surgent flanks out wide to the left. He's got two long touchdown catches tonight. Morin from the gun. They're going to run it. And it's Anderson St. Ons who's had a fine night for the Coney Rams. St. Ons to the 36. I would watch, see how I say, he, he took a shot late there. He kind of got spun around and took one up high. Took him a second to get up. Hope he. A little, uh, little limp there on the way back right. to the huddle, too. So give him six, second and four. St. Ons had 36 yards at halftime. He's got 126 now. Wow. Sergeant wide left. 
Parker Moore in the sophomore quarterback in the shotgun. Here's the turn. Here's the give. St. Ange again is the ball carrier, and Duty hit him immediately. Almost knocked the ball out. And then Gardner converges. Yeah, nice job there. Uh, St. Ange, I think, has a weird balance compared to everybody else because of the his height. And so even though you get him high there and look like normally you're going to fling him down, he's able to stay on his feet. But to your point, St. Ange, I think, had to put two hands on the ball because it looked like he almost coughed it up. And St. Ange will get a blow here, comes to the sideline. Third and two, 6-15 left in the fourth quarter. 28-14, Coney Surgent wide left. That's his spot. Flynn, the running back now. Got a man in motion. Morin with a long cadence here and a timeout called by Coney. That was like the exact same play that they ran in the third quarter that they burned a time on. Because I don't, th- I think it was, uh, I don't think it was Damon's who came in motion, but it was the exact same formation. So a timeout is called with set, uh, 6:02 left in the fourth quarter. 28-14, Coney. Tomorrow we're in Winslow, Foxcroft Academy, and Winslow. Game time, 1 o'clock, live video and audio, centralmainsports.com, 1160thescore.com, and the Score YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to right now by going to YouTube. Central Main Sports is where you find us, Central Main Sports. And tonight in our pregame show, we had a great package of features put together by our digital director, Sean Packard, a look back at the history of the Coney Gardner matchup and interviews with both coaches. You can find that at our YouTube channel, Central Main Sports is where you can find it. Yeah, YouTube, uh, any of our games, they'll be streaming when we're streaming, any of those features, much like the archive for the vault. Give them a second, but they'll they'll be up there. Yep, they'll be there. All right, third and two from the 37-yard line, 6-0-2. Left in the third, Surgent is wide to the left. They have three receivers flanked out left. And a dead ball foul as the handoff to Gavin Flynn. And procedure the call on Coney. Yeah. So they come out of the timeout and flub it. Yeah, they were trying to go quick and catch Gardner off, but they didn't set. So illegal procedure on Coney. From third and two, they go to third and seven. Next week, field hockey playoffs. Mesolonski playing Lewiston Tuesday afternoon at 5. And then Wednesday, Skowhegan's playing Hamden Academy at 3. Both of those games on the score. Looking forward to both of them. The place for local sports. Morin drifts left, going to throw it. Throws it down, overshoots his man. The intended receiver there for the Coney Rams, Lance Terrio. Covered on the play by Owen Chadwick, overthrown football. Fourth and seven. I credit that linebacker there as well who got out and uh, it altered it because obviously Morin had to throw it over him. All right, Morin to punt, back to return. Braden Elliott is on the far side. Evan Whalen on the near side. A big stop for Gardner because obviously you get uh, Coney off the field, but they stopped the clock with the incompletion. Snap is good. Morin's kick. Nice. Fielded at the 36, it is Elliott looking him go midfield, cuts inside, he's got speed. We saw it on the touchdown and a flag down too. They may tack on more. The Braden Elliott return to the 37-yard line. He is very shifty. And let's see what the call is here. I wonder if it was a block in the back. Trying to see there as we showed you the replay of that big return. Nothing really stood out. Official on the side of the play. Through the flag. Quite a discussion going on. Yeah, because the flag came from the, the sideline closest to us, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so he, yeah, it came by the official who's over on the sideline right now in front of Goose Scott, in front of Troy Scott, the bald head. Long discussion. Yeah, really. Holding on the defense. Interesting. And then... Block in the back. It's all right, so we have offsetting penalties. So never mind. 
So we'll do it again. Holding on a... All right, so is the run stands? Shouldn't, should it? Shouldn't you replay if fourth down? Off, if it's off, uh, off, I don't know. I think you should, whatever. First and 10. <laughs> it's first and 10 from the 33. I mean, if the penalties occurred after the play was dead, I guess... Yeah, but you can't have holding when a play's dead. I know. You, uh, I'm confused. Yeah, me too. All right, first and ten. Back to throw. Nagy being rushed, and he is sacked and down. Putting him to the ground was Josh Kidd, the senior captain. And Nagy had th that one I think uh, Nagy got to get a little bit of uh, blame for because he knew the rush was coming. He rolled away. And then he got absolutely spun down. Yeah, either get out of there or throw it away. So a sack and a biggie. And it's second and 20 now from the 44 for Gardner, trailing 28-14. Asher Nagy calling signals. Back to throw. Flips it downfield. Man open down there, but it's underthrown intended for Zach Kristen. He was there. He had him. Not only that, Kristen is not a small man. He got open. So he might not go down on first contact. He might be dragging some rams with him for a minute. He got separation. Ball was short. Stops the clock. 5.02 to go in the fourth. 28-14. Brady Davidson wide to the right. He's got a touchdown catch in the slot now for the Gardner Tigers. Evan Michoud. Third and 20 from the 44 for Asher Nagy. Rolls to the right, sets up, flips it down. It is deflected and incomplete intended for Zach Kristen again. And all kinds of red around the throw. Oh, that was a nice defensive play there. And I nope. think that's a little bit you see at Nagy as a backup, a little bit of uh, lack of comfort because that needs to come out quicker. Comes out quicker, he's open. So. You're going to give the ball up here or go for it on fourth and 20? I mean, you really don't have a choice, do you? I, I guess it depends on how comfortable you are with your punting team. If you think you can pin them deep. Well, I mean, you should be able to here. Punting with a line of scrimmage being at their 44. But do you want to give? Yeah, that's the concern, right? Because you should say fourth and 20 is not obvious, but then how many times are you going to get the ball? Fourth and 20 from the 44. Patrick Munzing has made the call. They're going to go for it. Nagy's going to throw. Back, flips over the middle. It is incomplete. Hit the receiver, Kristen, right in the hands. And he did not bring it in, and it is incomplete. And on downs, Coney takes over. That Gardner had it right there. He was right at the sticks. That was right where they needed to throw it. And just couldn't, uh, just a little bit off. Zach Kristen, who's had a good night, could not haul it in. And Coney now with a chance to burn some clock and finish this game off. A first and 10 from their own 44. Leading by 14 points, 28 to 14, with 4.50 to go in the fourth quarter. A very important for you know, Coney. Obviously two hands on the ball, but go down inbounds. Good point. They're going to run it. On first down. Did the ball come out? I heard players yell fumble. Doesn't look like it. Tony's so. got it. Yeah, St. Ange came out of the yeah, huddle it with was it. was St. Ange on the carry. So Anderson St. Ange, who's been the workhorse tonight, picking up four, second and six. More importantly, clock runs. I think the interesting discussion, Mike, is going to be, especially with how big St. Ange has been to get that lead back to two touchdowns, who's going to be the MVP? Because Surgent was front running for quite a while uh, you know I'll tell you the obviously we'll have the official stats or uh, my unofficial stats at the, at the end of the game for you second down and six from the 48 yard line clock tick 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 down to four minutes and more in waiting now for the 10 second call by the back judge there it is hand off to Flynn Gavin Flynn goes left. There's room there. Can he get around the corner? No. <laughs> He's fighting like the devil, but he can't do it. And, boy, some extracurricular stuff after the play by Chase Burgess, and he is going to get flagged for it. How about that stiff arm from uh, 
Flynn? Flynn. <laughs> kind of, he's, he's with so much powerful, he spun himself around. Yeah, he was, he, he was really motoring there and working hard. And he got to the 44, and they're going to add on. And Coney coach B.L. Lippert on the field. And they're going to add on. So a personal foul on Gardner will put the ball all the way down to the Tigers' 26 for the Coney Rams. Chance to salt this one away here. Uh, that's a big thing, obviously, because it gives you a fresh set of downs. Um, then Again, penalties, Mike, for Gardner. It, they've it's 55 yards worth of penalties, which isn't a ton of yardage, but that is the seventh penalty this half for them. Penalties here in this half and turnovers for the most part in the first half. Yeah. Clock running now, three and a half to go. First and ten Gardner. Excuse me, first and ten Coney at the Gardner 26. And Morin surrounded by running backs. He's got Terrio on the near side, or Veyu that is, Caden Veyu on the near side. And St. Ange on the other side. And Morin waiting out the ten-second call. First and 10, 26-yard line. Almost a fumble there on the handoff to St. Ange. And Anders St. Ange trying to make sick chicken salad out of you-know-what. And he did go out of bounds, unfortunately, from the Coney perspective with 3.01 left. Uh, that's a little bit of a mistake, but uh, hard to blame him after that. Looked like sort of a botch there initially. And then he breaks a couple tackles and then ultimately picks up two yards. We'll give him two. Second and eight from the 26. How about this for the uh, crazy leg sophomore? 21 carries tonight. They're not a running team, though. They're not a running team. Second down and eight. They're a running team. Handoff St. Ange, the workhorse, and Anderson to the 20. What a find, dude. We didn't get, a, we didn't get in that to a whole lot, but you lose a great running back in Heidel, and then to find... St. Ange. Next man up. Yeah. Stepped up. Gardner takes a timeout here. 2.50 to go. Patrick Munzing stops the clock. 2.50 left in the fourth quarter. It's going to take some luck. 28 to 14. Coney leading Gardner. Tomorrow in Winslow. Foxcroft Academy and the Winslow Black Raiders at 1. How about this, Mike? That was the 22nd rush for Anderson St. Ange, and it is his 25th total touch. He is um, probably going to need some ice after the game. Again, I, I we'll get into the numbers in the post game, obviously, because we were the uh, what, what's the name of the play, people that are here? Greatest rivalry. The Great American Rivalry. Great American rivalry people are here and I lost that ballot that he gave me. <laughs> I don't know what I did with it. That you just text it to somebody, but they asked Mike to pick an MVP for the game. And Surgeon obviously was a leading was the front runner for what? Half, three, two and a half quarters, but mm. St. Ange, the Coney has put it, the game on his back here and told him carry us to the end here. Yeah, this game tonight at Great American Rivalries on Facebook is featured, one of their featured games that they do, and they have a representative here as well. Here's Morin handing it off to you-know-who, Anderson St. Ange, oh, of man. course. <laughs> he went out of bounds hard, which you don't want to do here. I think he's going to be, I'm curious to see where they mark him down. He got close to the first down marker on that contact. No, okay, just look, I take that back. Yard short, it looks like. Yeah, it said that it was third and five, and they gave him four. All right, so it is fourth down and about a yard at the 16-yard line for the Coney Rams trying to put this thing away. 
Leading here 28 to 14. Morin in the shotgun. And a timeout. Yeah, I want to make sure to get this one right. Obviously, two scores. Gardner would need some some big time offensive heroics, but if you're Coney and you get this almost a chance to run pretty much the game out. Our two longest games this year, AJ, the Coney Messalonski game yep. and the Coney Gardner game. Yep. If we keep it up, we're going to be here at 10 o'clock. Yes. But that's what we do. That's why tomorrow, if you're thinking, oh, I'm a Foxcroft Academy fan and I was definitely going to make the drive down to Winslow, but I don't want to sit in the rain. Or if you're a Winslow slash Central Maine fan and you're thinking, I don't want to sit in the rain, don't worry. Mike and I will do that. We, we, <laughs> we will. They'll pay us to sit in the rain tomorrow. We actually... We will use the pop-up tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we will. And I, <laughs> and I will be wearing rain gear tomorrow. And I might even put a hat on, which I never do. I'm definitely going to have a hat on. But I, I, I probably will break out the uh, my motorcycle rain pants that I have. Oh, wow. You're coming full yeah, garb. Yeah. I'm ready for it tomorrow, baby. Do you think the rain tomorrow is supposed to be worse than the other, the two Saturdays ago or about when, the same? When, when we were there, I don't know. It kind of sounds like the same, but I, I don't think this is supposed to be as windy ah, tomorrow. So gotcha. we'll see. All right, fourth down and one at the 16-yard line for Parker Morin and the Coney offense leading 28-14. to 14, Hand off, and they didn't get it. Did not get it, and Gardner's going to get it. Yeah, so the Tigers have done actually a decent job of stopping Coney deep in the Gardner, deep in Gardner territory. They've turned him away several times. In fact, I think St. Ange, yeah, because that's good. The ball stands 17, so he lost the yard. Yeah, inside the 20, like you said, they've stopped him on fourth and goal twice. And they've had an interception at, in the end zone. Uh, and there you get another stop inside the 20. It was really the backbreakers, besides the turnovers, those two really, those deep touchdown passes to Surgeon. So first and ten for Asher Nagy. The sophomore quarterback sends three receivers to the right. Flanked out wide to the right is Cody Dingwell. All by himself in the backfield. Nagy back to throw. Flush for the pocket and sacked. He is sacked all the way back at the five-yard line. Johnny Letry. Leading the charge of Red Rams. Third sack of the night for Coney. And you can't take a sack there. you got to get rid of the football. And the clock keeps running, too. And they're going to call that uh, another 10-yard loss. So back to that's two, that's two of their three sacks have been uh, 10 yards. The other sack was a strip fumble. So second and 20, clock runs. Second and 20 at the five-yard line for Gardner. Backed up big time. Nagy sends a man in motion. That's Dingwell. Back to the goal line to throw. Fires it right side, and it is caught on the catch is Zach Kristen. And a short gain yeah, to the 10. That's a five-yard pickup. Dangerous pass, too. Kristen, three catches, 70 yards. And the clock down to 117, so clearly Gardner, no sense of urgency here. These two teams are going to play next week, right here. Right here. So we're going to do it all over again. Third and 20, and that's probably what Patrick Munzing feels like right now. We're not going to win this game. Over the middle ball is caught there by Mishu. Mishu breaks up field, 35. Evan Mishu, 40. And he's ridden out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Good catch and throw there. Clock's from... still running. <laughs> We've got a hometown scorekeeper, that's for sure. He went out of bounds, and it's a first down. <laughs> that is crazy. So Gardner loses about 25 seconds in all of that. Not that it matters, but still, I think we need a little bit better clock management than that. That is the epitome of a hometown scorekeeper. 
Pass of the flat caught. And out of bounds. No clock stopping. <laughs> the clock. Even the officials, they tell them to stop the clock, and they're not stopping the clock, and now time has run out. So let's see what they do here. The scorekeeper just decided not to stop the clock. And he decided it about 40 seconds ago. Well, this happened was at the end of the first half, too. Wasn't yeah. It? So on the catch and throw, excuse me, the yeah, the throw and catch. Hey, they were set to 45. That's yeah, good for 12. Are they gonna, what are they going to do here? There's no time on the clock. Are they going to give him a free play? Looks like one untimed down, I guess. All right, so they're going to get an untimed down. There's been little parts of this game that have been weird. Rivalry game, right? And this is certainly one of them. We're going to end on a quirky, weird note. Yeah, because you get the big, the big pass, obviously the 33 yards or whatever it was, and I'm pretty sure he went out of bounds. Maybe he didn't. I think somebody in the press box was yelling at me that he didn't, but still you get the first down, so there should have been a pause to reset the change, and it was 33 yards to move right, the chains. Right. So major conferences going on. All of this happening with no time on the clock. I think very reasonably, if I had to guess, Mike, I would say, I would think there's at least, if, if they went out of bounds, there's at least 20 to 25 seconds left in this game, in my opinion. Yeah. If they didn't go out of bounds, I think there's at least 10 to 15. All right, now the referee is going to come over to Coach Lippert. That's an animated conversation. He kind of brushed off that head ref in a hurry, didn't he? It's 28 to 14. This is a whole lot of talk for a game that is out of reach. Let's end this thing. Unless, it's 946. Unless, unless Gardner's got a 14-point play in their, uh, their bag. I think they're just going to give him one untimed down. All right, so we're going to get an untimed down here just for giggles. They're just going to take the knee. No, they're not. Nagy back to throw down the left side, and it is either intercepted, intercepted or incomplete. And either way, is the game over, he said with a question mark? Because one never knows tonight. Ref said that was a good interception. All right, now what? Do they have time on the field? Maybe they have time on the field, and they didn't tell the timekeeper up here that they have time on the field. So that's got to be what this is, because this is downright wacky. Well, either way, this is going to be a knee in whatever time's left on the field. I think that's going to be the end of it. All right, Coney with the football. And there's a knee. And presumably, he said with a question mark, that is the end of the game, and it is. Because one never knows here tonight. The final score in this one, in the 145th matchup of Gardner and Coney on the gridiron, the Coney Rams 28th. And the Gardner Tigers 14, the postgame show is next. This is high school football and the place for local sports. Sports Radio 1160 WSKW, the score. 
Oh, please start. You wouldn't allow your car to bypass its maintenance, would you? Hey, Jen, would you look this up on your computer? Oh, wish I could. This office computer is so slow. How about your computer maintenance? Trust the pros at Computer Improvements. They can come on site or stop by. Handling general maintenance, antivirus protection, hardware upgrades, and Computer Improvements can set you up with solid-state hardware memory, giving your operating system wicked fast response time due to less moving parts. So your day isn't like this. Contact Computer Improvements to schedule your service today. Computer Improvements, downtown Skowhegan. Are you fed up with high prices at the pump? Do monthly utility bills drain your wallet? If you're nodding your head yes, Renewal by Anderson is your best solution. They custom build and install weather tight replacement windows and back them with a generous, fully transferable limited warranty. Call now to schedule your free design consultation. Plus, take advantage of this limited time offer with incredible savings and attractive financing. Don't miss out. Call Renewal by Anderson today. Notice the price of gas and oil lately? Thinking about a pellet stove? Pellets are a renewable resource that are economical, and pellet stoves don't have to be ugly or loud. Come talk to us at Somerset Stone and Stove. Let us explain why now is the best time to have your pellet stove installed. Wouldn't you love to have a gas stove or fireplace designed for your home? Let Somerset Stone and Stove design and install a Regency gas stove or fireplace that is just right for you. Let us customize your Regency gas stove or fireplace while you enjoy the beauty and warmth. Visit Somerset Stone and Stove in Oakland. I came for a visit and I just fell in love with it. They just want to see you be you and like just excel. There's a lot of opportunities here. It really gives me time to figure out what I want to do with my life. It's a good stepping stone to get to where you want to be. The tuition is definitely part of what brought me here. You know, credits transfer, that's huge, especially for a community college when you're trying to figure out what you want. CM's the best place. Honestly, it's the best place. you got to be here to experience it. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, no matter how big or small, depend on Hammond Lumber Company for the products and services you need. The knowledgeable staff at Hammond Lumber will be with you every step of the way and keep your project on schedule. From free estimating and project planning to design and drafting services, an extensive product inventory with a wide variety of brands to choose from, and of course Hammond delivers from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner. Randy Belanger purchased the Harry J. Smith Company over seven years ago, knowing his customers expected the same quality service as they have always received for over 100 years. With 10 bays and 12 employees, we can have most of your repairs done the same day. Whether it's on your car, truck, or RV, we can handle it. Just call us and let us go to work for you. The Harry J. Smith Company, 13 Sanger Avenue in Waterville, keeping your vehicle on the road for over 100 years and doing it the right way. There's the boot in that mass of Coney Rams humanity. The boot was just grabbed by B.L. Lippert, the head coach at Coney, and brought over to his team. Parker Surgeon has been named the Great American Rivalry Series Most Valuable Player of the game tonight. We had it a toss-up, but we leaned toward Anderson St. Ons, but Surgeon won the MVP. He had two long touchdown receptions. And also a 41-yard punt return that set up another touchdown. But the Coney Rams have won the boots. And they have won it for the second consecutive year as they grab their 80th win in the history of this matchup that goes back 145 years. They win tonight 28-14. They finish their season at 5-3. And these two teams will crank it right back up a week from tonight right here and do it all over again, which I think is kind of weird. Yeah, they're going to play again. Yeah, it is weird, especially because the, the location's not going to change. Obviously, since Coney won, they get home field advantage. Yeah, it's it's got to be weird after playing and winning tonight and you've got to prep for the very same team. The adjustments are going to be interesting to watch next week. Yeah, three and four. They're going to play again next week, so we'll see you next week. <laughs> so the, the adjustments are going to be interesting because, you, you know, you, you, you saw everything, I would think, tonight from each side. And so, you know, what can you do? And I think Gardner, obviously, having lost 28-14, to has got more adjustments to make, but... And the question is, what do you do at QB for if you're the Tigers? Yeah, I, I think you got to stick with Nagy, don't you? I mean, he moved the team. 
Yeah, I mean, I think for sure a week of prep, I think, would help him. Um, I would be curious to see. I think, you, obviously, you also have to find um, find a use for Burgess still in the offense. Yeah, that may be something they work on as well. So 28-14, and the Coney Rams ran out to a 21 nothing lead in this game, getting touchdowns in the first quarter from Anderson St. Ange, a six-yard touchdown run, then a 76-yard bomb from Parker Moore into Parker Surgent. They led 14 to nothing at the end of one, increased it to 21 to nothing in the second period on another bomb to Parker Surgent. This one from Parker Morin covering 64 yards. It was 21 to nothing right before the end of the first half. But the Gardner Tigers scored Braden Elliott. Nice run after the catch from Nagy and made it 21-7. to First half, three catches, 152 yards for Parker Surgeon and two touchdowns. We go to the second half in the third quarter. Davidson catches an 11-yard touchdown pass, and the extra point by Nagy was good, 21-14. to Gardner was in it, one-score game. But it was put away, a 29-yard pass play, and I can't, it's funny, I can't even... Re- oh, Killian Arnold. Yes. Nice catch, 29-yard pass play. I was going to say I couldn't even read my own writing. i got to be better. Foster with the extra point, 28-14. to 14. That's how it ended on the scoreboard. AJ's got the final stats. Yeah, Burgess finished 12 carries, 105 yards, two fumbles lost, only two carries in the second half. Uh, he was 3 for 6 for negative 1 yards. And then uh, Nagy, 9 for 20, 181 yards, two touchdowns, but also two interceptions. Gardner had nine penalties for 65 yards. Uh, uh, Morin, kind of an ugly night after a really hot start. Nine for 20, 219 yards, three touchdowns, but an interception. And then, obviously, Surgeon, as you highlighted, Mike, this is where we were let you make your decision for yourself, MVP. He had those three catches, 152 yards, two touchdowns. He had the punt return, so about 200 all-purpose yards, but... St. Ange had 24 carries, 140 yards with a touchdown and a fumble lost. Also three catches for 35 yards. And he had, of those touches, he had 15 of them in the second half. He was a workhorse. I, 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 you know, we voted. We agreed. We, we voted for Anderson St. Ange. Parker Surgeon won. He had a great game, but I thought St. Ange won this game for Coney in the second half because he just pounded that Gardner defense, and he got the ball. He got the touches in the second half that made the difference in this game. Yeah, and how about the, he had that big 40-yard run as well that helped set them up. Um, and they had got those penalties, obviously, that backed them up initially. But, yeah, I, that's what I think was the tip of the cap for me. Technically more yardage, more all-purpose yardage for uh, Surgeon. It was big to set up that lead, but St. Ange, when it seemed like they kind of needed a spark again, he was that spark in the second half, and helped. they just put him on his, on the, his back to carry him to the win. But Parker Surgeon is such a weapon. He literally is such a game-breaker for sure, and he broke this game <laughs> as Lettery runs away with a boot there down below. Um, he, he is a weapon, and he can blow a game up at any time, and when you've got that kind of weapon, just wow. And Morin, those two throws Morin made were magnificent. Well, yeah, and to credit to where it is because technically all four touchdowns, not even technically, the punt return he had set up the first St. Ange touchdown, and then the Arnold touchdown was uh, in action. They were trying to run a couple times where Sergeant runs through that side, clears out the coverage, and then Arnold gets completely lost and was wide open for it. So the Coney Rams win tonight. Their record goes to 5-3. and three. Gardner Tigers will head back down Route 201, having lost and have their record fall to 4-4. Four and four. And this week, they will prepare for the very same team. Both teams will prep for the other team because they're going to play again here on Friday night at Fuller Field in Augusta in the Class B North playoffs. Tomorrow, we are in Winslow. It's Winslow and Foxcroft Academy wrapping up the regular season. 1 o'clock game time. We'll be on the air with their pregame show. About 12.45, AJ and I will be there for the call here on the score. So that is going to wrap it up for us here tonight. For Galen Neal, our videographer, and for AJ Knight, I'm Mike Violet saying good night. Finally, from Fuller Field in Augusta, final score here tonight in the battle for the boot, the Coney Rams 28 and the Gardner Tigers 14. This high school sports presentation on the place for local sports, the score, has been brought to you by Central Maine Community College, Central Maine Motors, Hammond Lumber Company, Mid-State Machine, 
Whittemore and Sons, Somerset Stone and Stove, 201 Tire Battery and Service, BJ Diggs, Renewal by Anderson, Assistance Plus, Joseph's Market, The Harry J. Smith Company, Computer Improvements, Casella Waste, and by Dixon's Country Market. For all your local sports action, keep it right here.